Is that just the equivalent of pulling a bunch of wires and praying? Yeah. Yeah. That's all IT work is. I was good at it. <laughs> all right. Uh, the stream has started, and I'm in Tanya's channel, and I hear all of us acting Yay. up. A reboot fixed it. Huzzah! So it wouldn't I hate when a reboot fixes things. That is unfair. <laughs> Uh, you know, this is indicative of D&D &D and dungeon mastering. So, now that we're all actually here, and the stream seems to be working, um, praise to whatever you or don't believe in, let's go check out our D&D &D room, and then we can, uh, we can get started on creating characters. And for those watching on my channel, oh, you know what? Let's try a squad stream. I forgot about that. Sorry. Gary. Oh God. Yeah, no, it's fine. Everything's going wrong over on my channel right now. Oh no. Um, I, I accidentally made Shannon a mod, and now she's going to be drunk with power. Hold oh on. dear. I don't even know how to do anything. I'm going to be busy anyway. <laughs> you can. I mean, you can oh, ban dear. people now. Hold on. I'm. I'm sorry. It's just like the movie says. Have you ever tried being drunk without power? It's boring. No one listens to you. <laughs> I'm gonna. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna ban Adam. <laughs> oh. No. oh. <laughs> Suddenly, I like where this is going. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I I was trying you to VIP her, but like it's you can ban Adam, but you can never anymore? take that fish away. Wow. That's true. Does VIP oh, well, flat, does, does, does exclamation point VIP? Is it is it slash VIP? Is that what it is? It is. Okay, that's what it is. Okay, I'm gonna give wow. Shannon Don't is now a VIP. Then. <laughs> ban me, Shannon. I don't know if that's a weird thing. I'm just, I don't like too hip to understand. <laughs> that is, All right. that is not the equivalent of step on me. It's not. <laughs> All right, I have. Okay. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Start lights. squad stream. Here we go. I got it. I got it. Huzzah! It says we're squad streaming in squad with Cipher of Tear. There All you right. go. There you go. We did it. Oh, hey, awesome. We did it. So it's all just, happening. Just like any D&D adventure, something has to go wrong before you get started because you need somewhere to go and something to do. All right. Um, since we're you want to show you want to show us the room? Yes. Let's go. Let's go uh, check out the room. Oh, and there are gifts for you. Take one of. Oh wow! Take oh, two. look at this! I totally stole take that two? idea. Take two. I totally oh. stole that idea. Are they both the same? Gary. Are no, they all the they're same all thing? different. Uh, oh wow! I'm gonna take an orange one, uh, oh, no, uh, one. and then that one matches my outfit. So. Oh my god, Brian! All right, do we do we do we open these now? Um, if you like, yes, feel free. Uh, there was a request uh, to lower the game sound. Uh, oh let me damn it! Let me, what? Ooh, a golden oh slingshot! A golden, and a golden axe. axe! Wow! This is a game changer. Thank you. That golden axe is a big deal, Shannon. I just got money and gold nuggets. What? No fair. Uh, just gold a nuggets. Fossil and a stand mixer. <laughs> Don't be ungrateful. Okay, yeah, I... Wait, Brian, do you want to trade? You need something? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, I. I... <laughs> oh my god. I'm fine with the gold. I t I'll take the gold. I'll take the gold. I, I just. Here, just, I got two golden things. Maybe. Do you want. It's got game show on us for a moment. Do you want the golden. Confused. The golden slingshot? Oh, I have a golden slingshot. Okay. Um, um see Gary peeping the final present on the ground. Gary is standing on a present. Who got? Did everyone get two presents? Oh, sorry. I, I'm, I'm we can just move. We can just move Gary out of the way. See, that's. <laughs> who, who's who didn't get two presents? I got, I got I know two. I got two. Brian, did you not get two? I got two. I got I got a, a package of bells oh, okay. and uh, and a gold and gold nuggets. Very well, then we can leave it out there. I may have done nice. nine. All right. Welcome on in. All right, one at a time. Form an orderly system of <laughs> just everyone. Just, everyone just click A at once. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to wait my turn. I don't want to do a get damage, out. Shannon. <laughs> Okay. Just, just, oh my god, you guys. <laughs> wow. you done? Really, really. I'm just yeah. Kidding. yeah. I'm this, just kidding. This is going exactly the way I imagined it would. All right. If you'd like to go downstairs, I will come down last so everyone can see once you're in there. Um, if you'd like to go in the basement. I love your house. I Thank love you. the painting you put by your stream desk. Thank you. It's one of the fakes. 
Uh, because I discovered if Red- I love the fakes. Yeah, if Red ever comes to your island and you get a fake, um, oh, downstairs, Gary. Oh Unless you just want to see my house. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just looking around. Oh, okay. a nice place. Thank yeah. you. you I have the, the girl, fake girl with the pearl did. earring in mine. Sorry, Brian. Oh, uh, you no. guys, uh, are yeah. we not playing poker? No. Oh, I was here for poker. Magic really? poker. Think of it like poker with magic. Welcome to your doom. <laughs> Ah. This Cypher, is once so once again, cool. my, my hat is off to you. You've done a great job with this room. Yeah. Thank you. It's amazing. I love the uh, the air purifier. <laughs> I, that was in my store today, actually. Oh. Uh, where are you going, Brian? I gotta figure out what's what's an appropriate outfit for sitting at this table. I'm gonna take some of the um, I'm gonna take some of the graphics off of my screen so that it's not. Um, uh, not quite so uh you can actually see what's going on there no worries you can oh also goodness sit on the other kelly side. thank you for the gift subs um i do have alerts off however because i'm gonna try to make this a nice export to youtube later all right um we have a fan so everyone's cool there's water we will take uh, yeah, a break. that's a good idea let me turn mine off as well there we go alerts off okay all right sorry no worries so Our... before we get uh, yeah. before we get into this talk uh, tell us a little bit about how you how you cur curated this room because it's you, you have done a really good job with it um so some of it is uh thanks to you and leah because um when we talked about doing this when i was on animal talking uh i mentioned it i mentioned on twitter you mentioned it in your stream and some of our community members really came through and suddenly there's like here's a jungle wall here's a dungeon wall here's everything you need the table and chairs I already had upstairs in the bedroom and uh, the D&D &D logo, uh, Jaybird's dev did that and I've had that since I started playing the game. The simple wood table has fabric you can customize and I decided to put the D&D &D logo on it since that was one of the things he did. He did the regular D&D &D logo, um, rainbow D&D &D logo, and then behind me, is the Rivals of Waterdeep logo. And so he just made them as patterns. Um, and, you know, I was trying to think of, of the classic kind of sitting around at a table with your buddies uh, feel for a room. You know, we're already doing the stereotypical thing of being in a basement and playing D&D. &D. So I wanted something fun. I wanted, I definitely wanted books to be around because uh, I grew up pre-digital anything to do with D&D. &D, so you had to lug around like six books if you wanted to play, <laughs> you know, I love that. <laughs> so, uh, I, I finally got enough books to make a bookshelf and Gary, I still owe you books cause they were finally in a book in my shop the other day. Um, and oh, Leah actually made a bookshelf for me. So I'm all good on that. Thank you. I have one now. Yes. But I still feel bad. So you don't, I, I you're, said you're I all good. You books. Um, oh, and, that's okay. Um, the, I think that, I think the ruins wallpaper works really, really well. Like that, that is, this is like the most D and D wallpaper <laughs> I think you can get. Yeah, I tried the I tried the dungeon and I wasn't exactly feeling how it, it looked. Um, yeah. The, the skull door plate just kind of fit. I'm like, eh, it's, a, it's supposed to be a faux dungeon. Let's have a skull door plate. Um, hot water so we can stay hydrated. Um, the diffuser was literally in my store today and I thought it was cute. And the box mm -hmm. I just had down there because I'm like, it's a basement. We all have one box. No, it's perfect. It's perfect. Stuff. What are these papers in front of us? So there's the scattered papers that you can get as a DIY. Um, but I think it's a little broken because you need like scrap paper to make the scatter papers. You need scatter papers to make the scrap paper. But a friend had it in their store, so I bought enough of them. And then because we're all nerds, someone made a pattern for character sheets. So that is like a oh, five this is, this is a custom thing? Yeah, those are customized. Oh, cool. So, IRL, you would not need a literal stack of paper to play D&D. &D. Um, but it's the closest thing other than having a book in front of you. So right. I was like, eh, it looks like a character sheet. Let's run with it. So... It's a shame the game doesn't have, like, a Dungeon Master's uh, screen. That would be perfect to have. Yeah, on one of my outside tables, I used to have the board game sitting around. <laughs> And it's not the same feel, even though you can touch it and dice kind of roll. Um, it's not quite the same feel if you're trying to emulate like D and D or something. Um, I'm so... Trying to take photos of us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, it's not easy. 
No, it's it's not. It's hard to do when you're sitting because you're me you can't go in your menu. You can't go in like your inventory unless you get up. Um, I just take a capture. Yeah, well, like your in-game phone. Eventually, you get a you get a phone and a camera, so you can take a photo of everyone. I really like the, uh, the the rug with the arcane pattern underneath as well. It's amazing. The rug is so cool. Yeah, that's yeah. just the magic circle rug. And since everyone's visited, I could send you one because it's in my inventory. <gasps> amazing. Ooh, I love it. Yeah, because... I this... feel like we're, we're sitting right on like a portal <laughs> straight to hell or something. <laughs> so, it... Cypher, should we pull up our our uh, our character? Yes. Sheets? <clears throat> um, so before we get into uh, your character creation, I wanted to know... I know Brian has played a little bit, but it's been a while. Um, but everyone else, none of you have played D&D before ever, correct? correct. Not even one correct. time. Wow. Okay. Um, so I wanted to, to answer any questions you might have about D&D itself as everyone kind of pulls up their character sheet and I open up um, the campaign so I can look at your sheet. And for those watching at home, I enabled the D&D Beyond overlay. So if we do this more regularly, once everyone's done with their character, it'll show your character portrait and your hit points and your name. So people watching at home can kind of go, oh, that was a bad hit. You lost 20 HP. And they can see what your character's health and name and class is on the side of, of the bar. So, so yeah, so who um wants to go first and actually before we go first Shannon. oh wow <laughs> adam just for that you have to introduce yourself first boom there you go okay what uh what who are <laughs> what you? am i introducing <laughs> so yeah, who are you right what, into that one what who are you what do you do and why do you want to learn to play D? &D? um my name is adam uh i'm an alcoholic and Adam. Uh, my name is Adam. Hi, Adam. I am a game developer, and I have always uh, dabbled in video games and nerdy things, and I just uh, somehow, uh, as I said to Shannon and Gary before, I owned an internet cafe for many years and still somehow never found myself in a Dungeons & Dragons group. So... Here I am. I would love to know how to actually play, and uh, maybe it'll make me more imaginative. All right. Uh, cool. Gary, what made you want to jump in and do this? And who are you? What do um, you do? Uh, my name's Gary. I'm a, a writer by profession, mostly for film and television. Uh, and I'm also the host of uh, Animal Talking on Twitch, the uh, celebrity late night talk show that takes place inside Animal Crossing. Uh, Tanya, you and, uh, and Shannon have both been guests on the show. Adam is my uh, sidekick. And uh, now it's awkward. I got to invite Brian on the show, I guess, because he's the only one who's not been on. So uh, I hereby extend an, I mean, an invitation to Brian to come on Animal Talking. This is at so some sudden point in the future. I should have had something prepared. This, this was your plan all along, wasn't it? Um, <laughs> so, um, I, uh, I, you know, look, ever since I was a kid, I've been into nerdy stuff, reading science fiction and comic books and playing video games. And yet, like Dungeons and Dragons, which is, you know, one of the true kind of pillar stones or cornerstones of, of, of nerd culture, is something that somehow has always passed me by. I think it's because I grew up in the UK where, you don't, you, I mean, Dungeons and Dragons obviously is a global thing, but it was never, when I was a kid, was not as, it was not as popular as, as it was with... Uh, uh, kids, you know, growing up in the United States in uh, like the kind of 80s when I was a kid. Uh, so I just kind of, you know, it just it just passed me by. And for years, I would say to people, uh, I would kind of bemoan the fact that I've never played it. And I, I spent a long time trying to find uh, a group uh, that would be willing to onboard like a total newbie player and have the patience to kind of teach me the rules. And it never really came together. And so I'm really, really glad that this has happened because not only do we get to do exactly that now and uh, get to learn how to play from you know very experienced uh, people, uh, but we get to do it in this really cool way as well inside Animal Crossing. This is great. I love it. Yay, Brian. Who are you? What do you do? Why did you want to um, relearn to play? 
Uh, I am Brian. I am Urban Bohemian pretty much everywhere. Um, mostly variety streamer on Twitch and very talkative everywhere else on the internet. I played D&D way back um, when, yeah, like hardcover, big red book. Um, back when it was like Satanic Panic was starting to fill in and we have the, tra the Jack Chick track that everybody makes fun of. And then I just sort of lost touch with it. Um, a big reason for that is a, re is a lot of the reasons we talk about today. The hobby itself wasn't very welcoming and open to any, um, to people of color, especially. And um, it just, you know, other things happened. So I'm wanting to come back to it now because I kind of want to revisit this world. And I have friends who play over Discord, by mail, message boards, and even do like some RPG shows. And it's like, I kind of want to get my toes back in the water, but I really need to reacclimate myself because so much has changed since I have been away. Yes, and uh, definitely not last or least, Shannon, because you joined us kind of uh, just a couple days ago in this I did. <laughs> yeah, and uh, shenanigans, you know, when I was younger, people used to call me Gans because shenanigans. Oh, um, uh, <laughs> um, I probably shouldn't have mentioned that because I probably don't want to encourage that. But um, yeah, thank you guys for having me. <laughs> I, uh, I I've never played D and D, and the only reason is I feel like I missed my window where I I got really insecure because everybody that I knew who played was already really good at it, um, and I kind of just missed the boat. So. I'm really excited to have an opportunity to learn. I've, I've watched people play a lot, but um, I've never actually done it myself. So I'm really grateful for the opportunity for uh, your tutelage. Oh, well, thank yeah. you. Um, also, I'm an actor. I forgot to say what I do. <laughs> I, I'm an actor. Oh, I'm on like Westworld and I'm in the game, uh, The Last of Us Part Two. I play Dina. Um, so that's what I do. <laughs> awesome. Very cool. There's a lot of Dina fans around this place, let me tell you. We all love Dina. Yes, and just a note Thanks, for the guys. chat, um, while we all do love Critical Role, we love um, TLOU2, uh, please be respectful of everyone who's guesting. They're taking time out of their day and schedule to come hang out and do this. And, um, you know, just be aware that we're here to have fun. I'm here to teach everyone how to play, um, you know, and the way that I play may not be the way that they wind up playing themselves or even DMing in the future. So just keep that in mind and, you know, be respectful of the fact that we're here for this today and not try to make it into a let me ask you questions about The Last of Us or Book of Eli or anything else that we do or, you know, demand when ever anyone is going to be on Critical Role because none of us <laughs> have access to be on Critical Role, so don't ask. All right. There goes my other plan. That was that was my other plan today, and now it's gone. So. Um, well, no one from Critical Role was in this chat. Listen, let me so. tell you something. By the time we're by the time, we're, by the the time we're done, by the in time we are done, Critical Role people are going to be begging to come on this show. Hi, Ashley. I don't know if you can hear me, but it's I have Gary's chat up in another uh, monitor. So hello, Ashley. I miss you. I hope you are well. Because um, Ashley and I connected after the Black as Fuck roundtables. I did with uh, Critical Bard and some folks. So, um, and I guess I should say who I am. Oh my God, I didn't even do that. It's my stream uh, in my basement. Uh, my name is Tanya, Cypher Tier, and I've been playing D&D for a long time. I left the hobby for quite a while, mostly because there weren't a lot of people like me. I wasn't seeing shows with um, people like me on them or anyone like, you know, Brian, or Shannon and just books and shows and comic book stores and game stores were not welcoming. Uh, I came back to it with 3.5, left again, and then thanks to Greg Tito, who I don't know if he's lurking or anything else. Um, okay, we're, we're, people are back to saying I'm quiet. I don't understand. I have. I can hear you great. Yeah. The, yeah, the Discord call is fine. I think the channel, um, the stream may have lost your audio significantly um i'm not what sure what to on? do it's about so that because i have rebooted everything's uh, um so i turned myself up and i'm actually going to turn the in the little fan that's over our heads off because it is actually loud 
Um, there's AC in the game. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's way better now, actually. It was a fan in the game, so good job, Buss. Um, yeah, because you're that white noise. <laughs> yeah, better with it off, I think. Oh, right, because where you're sitting is, like, when I did the camera around to get a picture of us, it was, yeah. like, the fan made the big noise. So, of course. Yeah. yeah in game, so, out of game. There you go. There you go. <laughs> um, sorry about that. So, I've turned everything up as I can. Um, I don't know if I can get boosted anymore in Discord now that I'm back, but I have literally done all that I can to be as loud as I can uh, in the Discord call because uh, it is... It's as much as I can do. So hopefully we can boost it later in production, post-production. Um, but yes, I'm on Rivals Waterdeep, the image behind me. And, um, you know, that show's in its seventh season. And thanks to Greg Tito and D&D, we are the only show that is all people of color and black folks. And we are about to hit our midway point. I think episode five is this Sunday. So... Um, so yeah, that's what I do. I stream on Twitch. I'm a diversity consultant and advocate, RPG developer, and I'm working on the RPG based on N.K. Jemisin's uh, fifth season books. So that is what I do, beside doing stuff like this and having shenanigans with my friends. Um, so who wants to do their character creation first? Hey, I was just thinking if, if I'm looking on YouTube, right? Sorry, I, I, if I could find some like fantasy, cool fantasy music to play in the background here. Oh, um, nice. Go medieval for it. fantasy music. Hold on, sorry. Oh, wait, I've got a. <laughs> oh, so you found my channel. <laughs> wow. Uh, have you looked into Bardcore? Oh, is that a thing? Oh, my God. It is. Oh, here we go. Here we go. You really just... It's the genre okay. of music I just discovered. Listen I to have this. Serenscape, actually, Lauren, now that you say that. <laughs> I won a year of Sirenscape from a charity function. Oh, you weren't joking about Bardcore. No. Oh, yeah. Oh. No, not at all. That is a okay. thing. I am already anticipating an angry DM from the Opera Geek now. I don't know if this music is copyrighted. Am I going to get in trouble here? I have no idea. This is from Neverwinter Nights, Ooh. which is actual real D&D music, right? Good game. It'll be a bit quieter. Sorry, Tiny, I felt like I didn't mean to cut you off there. I just got excited about music. No, it's fine. I'm uh, I'm trying to sign into Sirenscape. And it won't let me. It's doing that stupid, are you a human thing? So that's not going to work out. Oh, the worst. Um, I, are you I, not a human? <laughs> it makes you click arrows to turn an image upside, <laughs> uh, the right side up. And if it's off No, we're by, not humans, we're cake. No, not the cake thing. Oh my god. Um, so while we're doing that, I've got to explain some basics of D&D while, while Gary looks for music. Um, so, yes, dump our knowledge. <laughs> Hold on, I'm typing in copyright free fantasy music. Oh god. We can, we um, can but hope. Oh, there is some, there is some. Copyright free fantasy background music. Here huh. we go. Relaxing fantasy music. No copyright. Here we go. Ooh. We, is it we'll to study see. by though? Because that's legit. <laughs> Ooh, this is pretty. <laughs> nice. Capture is the devil. The cake is a lie, but the lie is a cake. That is true. Um, so, Dungeons and Dragons is a high fantasy setting where you have elves, you have orcs, you have dwarves, and other things that we've all come to to know and sometimes love, sometimes not through things like Lord of the Rings, Tolkien. Um, other high fantasy authors that a lot of people consider the grandmasters and fathers of the genre. And in D&D, you basically get to set your own story or you can play a story pre-written for you in one of the books. And a lot of times when people are starting out, they will get a more experienced dungeon master to guide them through it. And they will have a pre-made character and a pre-made story. And so you can get a feel for you know, if I'm a barbarian, for instance, what does it mean for me to be in combat? What do I roll to hit something? What do I roll to then do damage? Or if you're a bard and you need to be alluring or evocative and tell people, you know, a very pretty lie in order to get them to do what you need them to do, how high is your charisma and how high is that other person's charisma? And how will you then 
you know, get your way. And if you fail, what is what is the penalty for failing? And all of this is tied together in an adventure. You know, the joke is you meet in a tavern and all of you somehow know each other or you meet in a tavern and you've been called together by the wizard or whoever. We're not going to do that. If we get to play, we will do a little bit of pre-made uh, adventure because while I do have a couple things I've written, I would not send you literally to hell in D&D on your first time ever playing. I will <laughs> save you from that. Uh, although if you ever want to run with that, we can do that later. Um, and so, you is know, you're not just 2020. <laughs> touche, touche. That is 2020. <laughs> so, I mean, we're living in Avernus right now. So I don't want to give you a fantasy version of Avernus as well. Uh, Gif Nova, thank you for that raid. So, you know, and the idea of it is to have a collaborative storytelling experience. A lot of people feel like D&D or any other RPG is basically, I go into a town, I get a quest, I go into the mountains and I find a dungeon and I murder everything and bring back the gold. For some people, they love dungeon crawling. That's what they'd absolutely love to do. Other people prefer to tell a story. And, you know, all of us have either created or, you know, taken in stories, you know, uh, with the Book of Eli, if that could actually be a really good RPG setting or RPG adventure of, of this trek to bring this book back. So that would be something you could actually modify into a campaign if you wanted. So things like that where you have a quest, you have a reason for going, and along the way your characters, if they go from level 1 to level 20 and then beyond that is epic level, you are basically godlike at that point. It's ridiculous if you play an epic level campaign. But your characters need a reason to be together. Either they met, they knew each other, maybe they met along the way to whatever adventure you're going on. And then you have to decide, will you fulfill the adventure you're trying to do? Will you bring the king back the sack of gold, the runaway, you know, son that doesn't want to get married to save the two kingdoms whatever it is that you've set out to do will you do it or you'd be like you know what i'm gonna go on a side quest peace peace out i'm gonna go like find a dragon and make it my own and come back with a dragon familiar or something so it's all about storytelling it's all about having fun and everything is determined by a d20 so that's why when people talk about d20 systems they're talking about DD. &D. So a d20 determines if you succeed or fail on most things that you do. Um, so if I say to Brian, roll me a d20, and let's say if you rolled it and you got 18 and you're in a fight, that means if the creature's armor is 18 or less, you successfully hit the creature. And then whatever you're using, so if you're a bard and let's say you have daggers, you would roll whatever daggers have for it for a damage dice and then that's how much damage you do to the creature so that's all very mechanical but a lot more of it comes in a theater of the mind you know shannon i'm thinking of like when you're doing voice acting that same kind of energy of this is what my character's doing this is what i'd like them to do and along the way you may do some rolls to see if you fail or succeed but a lot of it has to do with you know, how you bring this character to life and what they're doing with each other and how many people are in a party and what is your ultimate goal and, you know, does someone eventually want to leave the game? Do they want to leave the party? What have you. So that in a nutshell is is kind of what D&D &D is and what it's become. So um, with all that said, um, who wants to go first with fleshing out the character yay i got claps <laughs> <laughs> um i mean i'm happy to go first i i tried to like outline a little bit even though i don't know what a lot of the options mean okay uh which character would you like to look at the one with no race selected or the dwarf no i uh, yeah uh, i was looking at barbara okay so let's pull up barbara <laughs> oh, <I'm> gonna... <laughs> what Oh, I thought some. I'm gonna reassign. I actually did one up. I I did the homework ahead, so I'm gonna reassign. I made up a character already. Okay. I'm trying to click on it, and it's not. Oh, you me. know what? Because I clicked on it, so let me get out of that. So you click on it. 
Wait, is there, is there some kind of shared web resource that we all need to be looking at right now? Uh, yes. Yeah, the D&D &D Beyond. I'm on it, but I like, is, there a particular, is there a particular group or a section within that that I need to be in? So the campaign link I sent you goes directly to the link, and your character's oh, there, where Gary. Is... Oh, I, 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 I may have misplaced the link, though. Hold on. All right, I will put um, it in our group. Uh, hold on, I can... Yeah, okay. let me go ahead and do that. Are we using a chat channel in Discord or Twitter? Uh, Twitter DM. All right. One all right. I, all right. So while you do that, so okay. Now uh, I see it. Yeah. So I ca apparently can't look at it, even though I'm the DM. We can't look at it at the same time. So well, you go ahead. You go ahead and look at it because it's not letting me click on it anyway. So Weird. you can see what I've done and we can talk through it. Okay. Are you signed in to uh, D, D and D Beyond? Shannon, I am. Yeah. If you go up to the top right where your username is, and then mm -hmm. go down to characters. Oh, wait. yeah, I saw it. I think now I'm in. And then click edit on your character. Let's see, my characters. There we go. Barbara, view. Okay. All right, so now let's see if I can also view Barbara. I can. Yay. All right, so you've chosen a barbarian, which means you get to actually use a d12. One of the few dice that I've never rolled in the entire time I played D and D. <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, I wanted to be Barbara the Barbarian. It had a nice ring to it. I like that. Thank you. Yes, and uh, Obo Lauren, if you're still in the chat, is community manager for D and D Beyond, and it's what we use for rivals and what I've been using the last couple of years of professionally playing D and D. Uh, so hashtag sponsored for rivals, not for me personally. All right, so. Um, let's see if there's a way I can share your character. Because I think there is a link once she's done, you can share the character. And she'll yeah, because I kind of want to see what, what we're looking at here. I can see my own character. But Should I, I screen cap it? Can I those. upload it into the chat? Uh, no, what I can do, hold on, okay. is I can screen capture the character builder and add it to, oh. and add it to, um, aha. So there we go. Um, I'm going to put it up in the corner. Um, we this is on your channel, right? Yes. So if people okay. ah, come back here, come back here. I'm trying to do it in a way where I don't cover everyone, but that's not going to happen. But now people can see the character creator. Cool. Um, and I can do that with everyone's character when we build out. Um, so. You have 13 hit points right now, so it tells you how many hit points you'd have as a level one character. So the most you can have is 13. You have 12. And hit points is how many times I can get hit? That's how much health you have overall. So if we wind up in some combat right. okay. and something hits you and I say, well, how much hit points do you have? You go 13 and I'm like, oh, that character hit you for 20 points. Then you're dead. Sorry. Got it. Got it. <laughs> Like Pokemon, I know this. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. I'm uh, very cool. I don't know if you know. <laughs> yes, yeah, so here are your proficiencies. Okay. So basically, this is what you are good at as a barbarian. Um, okay. So you can be good at having light armor, medium armor, or a shield. Um, you can have a simple or martial weapon. So simple weapon would be like a dagger or something. Marshals, if you want to have like a mace or a sword or something. Um, so it looks like you already picked perception and animal handling, or that's there by default. I don't remember. I think, no, I picked them, but I don't really know what they are. I just was kind of like going through, I was like, I'll make some choices and then we can talk about it. Okay. I don't know if these are good ideas or bad ideas or. Uh, so they're good ideas. So basically perception means if you, let's say we wind up in a tavern for lack of a better example, and you talk to an NPC and you think they're lying to you, you could roll a perception check and see right. whether or not whether or not it feels like they're lying to you or not, or telling the truth. So perception is good. Athletics would be good if you were kind of trying to be like more more of a I'm a thief, but also strong enough to fight. So kind of like between a rogue and a, and a barbarian. Um, but perception mm -hmm. or survival would be good. But if you want to be like, Rar, I'm intimidating, you know, as a dwarf, you could pick intimidation. And so 
these will eventually give you bonuses when you have to make rolls on these skills. So perception okay. is fine if, you know, because you're picking a barbarian. If you want to be more intimidating, you could totally do that as well. Um, could I use that as my second one? Like, could I do perception and intimidating? Exactly. Instead of animal handling? Yeah, because you wouldn't. Really I just thought maybe being able to sweet talk animals would be cool. <laughs> um, nor it is cool. I don't know. I imagine. Sorry. Oh no no, no. you go ahead. It is cool, um, but a lot of times barbarian, at least, and I should say this with the caveat: I've never played a barbarian, but I don't remember if barbarians can get animal companions. Oh. Well, I feel then... like Shannon would want to have an animal animal companion. Yeah. I have a lot of IRL animal companions. Um, (laughs) And I just imagine like we'd run into a dragon and I'd be like, hey, buddy, can we talk? And he'd be like, totally. Um, And I thought maybe I'd be able to like, you know, befriend a dragon or something. But intimidation sounds kind of fun. So I'm going to go with perception and intimidation together. My oh, dog is uh, upset. Oh, no. I changed from animal. Oh, oh no. <laughs> She's barking. I mean, you can always... Dog 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 opinions. Yeah. I mean, you could always try to talk to a dragon should you meet one, but if your class doesn't have that, it would be at a disadvantage. Which it makes you... good sense. So I'd be like, you could try. We don't know how that's going to work out for you, but please, go forth and do that. Um, if you would like to rage... You uh, and you get this as a barbarian. <laughs> I don't know which chat because I don't have um, chat up now that we're looking at this on my screen. But if Ashley is around, yes, you could you could rage. Um, and basically, <laughs> it's it's like real life. If you get if you get angry and ragey, that's it. You get the red haze. You are just mm, like it. I'm beating everything. So that's it, it seems I, I like. It seemed also like a good disadvantage to have, like a fun duality, yeah. um, to have a rage problem. I mean, you could totally do that. And that's where, where character backstory can come in as well. Um, so, yeah, that's something. Yeah, I wrote that's... some stuff. Oh, I'm excited to see it. Um... I, I, I wouldn't get too excited, but I, I tried. You know, I wanted, <laughs> I, like, I, I've always had a, a teacher's pet problem, so I just really wanted to make sure you, <laughs> you were proud of me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, And then unarmored defense, because as a barbarian, you still are, like, deadly as can be, even without your armor on. So, like, somebody catches you asleep, you don't have armor on, you're still good. Okay, cool. So, so we're going to make everyone level one, and then if we do this again or make a campaign, we can bump people's levels up. So, this is your your basics. Um, So... Here's where we talk about your abilities. So the things that you just picked, you get ability mm-hmm. scores. So you can do standard if you wanted to manually pick and choose of what you want. Let's say you, because you're a barbarian, you're going to by default be a lot stronger. You may not be smart, but you can manually pick and choose what you want. Or if I said, here's 30 points, throw them amongst your ability scores, you can do whatever you want. So I see. To make it easy, let's just do standard, and D and D Beyond does this for you. Um, so these are your options. So as so you can decide: Do you want to be super strong? Do you want to be dexterous? Constitution is like how hardy you are. So like if mm-hmm. you wind up in a place like Icewind Dale, which is basically the tundra, how long could you be out there without needing like a coat and some food? Or would you, like, find a creature to cut open and crawl into because your constitution sucks, you could survive till you get there. Um, Intelligence, obviously, how smart you are. Wisdom, you know, you've seen some things. You've survived things. This is your wisdom. And charisma is how charming you are. So you can pick what, like, lowest to high, what you would like to do and then those numbers determine your bonus so after your ability scores are filled in it'll show you what bonuses you get i see um and so how many points do i get to put through there so you have to choose you have to put one of these numbers you have to put an eight in one of these a 10 in one of them a 12 in one of them so like let's say because you are a barbarian 
we said you had a 13 strength. So now you see that you get a plus one to any rolls recalling using strength. Okay. Um, am I supposed to uh, put those in there physically now? Yes. So. Okay. So where it says other modifier or override score, is that where I do it or I put it in total score? Um, so you pick this and then we can go to the other modifier um, after you do all of your scores. So the drop down at the top. Oh, I see. Who's, actually, who's actually driving this web browser right now? Is that Shannon? Is she the one with the mouse? I've, I know. That I've is got me. it up. Okay. That's, that's me so um, you can see it on my stream. But Shannon, I think you are still managing your own driving character. Also. Yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. I should pick standard array or manual? A standard array because manual means you have to pick and choose. Okay what you Roger want. that. Okay, I see now. Okay, so you said strength uh, 13. So that's what I just did as an example. You could make it as high as 15 if you want. Uh, I'm, I like your example. I'm going to take your... I, I actually would love if you would um, kind of drive me through this since I kind of don't know yet, just so I okay. can get a feel for it when we eventually played. How does that sound? Okay, so because you're a dwarf... Oh, go ahead, Brian. Like what kind of standard or weirdly unorthodox actions are kind of tied to each of the attributes? So dexterity, let's say you need to climb a sheer rock face. And while you may have a rope on you and you can like throw a rope and a, whatever you call the, the hook. And let's say you, you, ha you throw it up there, it's strong. You still need to do a dexterity check to see if you make it up this sheer cliff face. Um, intelligence, right. mm -hmm. okay. you know, let's say you are in a battle of wits with a 200 year old elven wizard. Um, is that, and you need to make an intelligence check to see, he told me X, but I know why is true. Or do I know why is true? I need to make an intelligence check against him to see who's right, you know? Um, charisma, mm -hmm. you know, Brian, if you, if you stick with wanting to be a bard, for instance, a lot of things you would do trying to charm someone, charm your way out of a problem instead of fighting, that would be a charisma. So as a bard, I would suggest a high charisma score, you know? Okay. So when I, when I pick like, for example, 13 for strength, and then I go to dexterity, I only have a certain amount of points to divvy amongst all these things, correct? Correct. So the way this is set up, so like if you pick eight for your dexterity, let's say because you're a dwarf and you're in armor, maybe you're not very silent right. and stealthy. So dexterity would be your lowest stat. So uh -huh. constitution, um, you'd probably have a 12 or 14 because you are, again, you are, you are a dwarf. You, are, you have survived all the things that have gotten you to wherever it is that you will meet up with the rest of the party and you know how to survive in the wilderness. So constitution is kind of like how you survive, how well you are built for the environment. Got it. Okay, I'll go with 14 then. Okay, um, so... Intelligence? Um, intelligence is literally just how smart you are, um, and it's more of a, if you need to like, see if you know something and do a history check. Let's say we find some ruins, and while you're a dwarf, you may not know dwarven history, so you would do an intelligence check or a history check powered by intelligence to see what you know or what you don't know. I see. Okay. Um, and since I picked like perceptive as one of my qualities, do you think that that would apply to like, I should have a higher intelligence or do they not correlate at all? Um, I would say for your perception, I would give a higher to your wisdom since you took that. Okay. So, you have so maybe should I do like 10 intelligence? Okay. Yeah. Um, so I guess... And then wisdom, 12? Um, probably, I would say 15 for your wisdom, because depending on how, how okay. old your dwarf is and what their background is, they could know a lot about their particular group of dwarves and the world around them. So, or maybe they know a lot about barbarian history specifically. So they could be very wise in, in certain ways. All right, and then charisma, it gave me a 12 as the only option. Correct, so. So, th so that's that. Yeah, so now what you see is when you make rolls, 
based on these stats, you will get a, a plus, or in the case of dexterity, unfortunately, a minus. Um, so if you roll something that calls for constitution, you'll add three to whatever you roll. I see. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, that so, makes sense. Yeah, so Barbara the Wise Barbarian is being created. <laughs> Very nice. That's my girl. Uh, what so, um, yes. race uh, is Shannon's character? Uh, a dwarf, I believe, correct? Yeah, a hill dwarf. Okay. A hill dwarf, okay. Yeah, so now we get to pick your character portrait, <laughs> if you would like. Okay, great. Um, is that under description? Uh, so if you, when you click the next arrow, you should be seeing um, character name and Barbara there. I hate that it like go, gets so dull when you don't touch your controller for a while. Oh. I'm like, why is it dark? Oh, you oh, can yeah. turn that off. Cool. How do you turn that off? Go well. Don't do it now because because if you go into your system settings, it's going to kick us out. But you oh. can do it in your system settings, the sleep settings. Okay. So yeah. I picked one. What did you pick? I picked a little portrait. Yes. Is um show me tell me where it is on the ones that I have up on the screen. So under Hill Dwarf Portraits, it's on the far right side. Okay. And it's four down. She's got kind of red hair and a helmet on. Oh, okay. I see her. Does that, she, yeah. Does she, she look like a Barbara? She looks like a Barbara. <laughs> okay, so For pick, sure. Uh, Shannon, is that, the, is, that, is that the right one that you're seeing there? Uh, let's see. On, you should be able to see it on Cypher's stream. I have to pull that up. Yeah, so your DM is thinking... I've gone into system, oh yeah, system settings. Yes, wisdom is knowing when to rage. You are correct. Okay. So true. Very true. <laughs> I actually just ordered that uh, I, I would like to rage um, tankard cover <laughs> because I'm a big nerd and bought the critical role tankard. I would it's, like to rage. I would like to rage, <laughs> so you could do that. Um, yes, yeah, so you picked a smuggler okay. background. Um, while you make sure that I have the right character portrait, I think I picked the right one. Okay. Yep, that's correct. Yay, I did it. So you I see a, it now. Yay. You nailed it. Um, so your proficiencies you picked are athletics and deception. Uh, tool proficiencies are, if we have to get in a boat, you're, you're our dwarf. Um, All right. It seemed good for smugglers. Yeah. Cause, that, like, she'd be boaty. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Yes, yeah, so your smuggler background, um, you have the download background feature. And so wherever you wind up, there's a network of smugglers that you can go to for help and safe houses. I got people. You got people. <laughs> you got people. I got people. So here's the fun part. Uh, you can pick personality traits for your character. And these are tied to the smuggler background. Or just are they... It, is Barbara a cheerful smuggler, like stab you in the back and go about her business dwarf? Or is she like, I'm the mastermind here. You all obey me. Well, I kind of, I, cause I kind of created a, like a little bit of background that I put in the notes. Oh, cool. Can you, can um, you go look at it? Yeah, please click notes. Notes. Is it in there? You? Yeah. Notes. Um, oh. And I put it in backstory. I just came up with like a little overall I that would like drive the character, but just for fun. I don't know. Maybe no. it's wrong. I, and so here's the I, thing. I thought it would be fun if her wrong. mother was gone. No, it's, it's okay. Don't ever let anyone tell you that the way that you want to set up your character is wrong. Because Well, I don't really know what I'm doing, so um. <laughs> I mean, that's fine, because a, a lot of people will go, if you don't play this way, if your character doesn't have this bill, um, do certain things, then you're playing wrong, which there is no wrong way to play D&D. You know, unless, of course, you're a jackass and, and tell people they can't play at your table because they're a person of color or queer, then you are playing it wrong, you're being a jackass. Yeah, that's definitely, that's wrong. Definitely wrong. That's, that's how to do it wrong. 
Um, so, um, yes. um, so, yeah. so in backstory, I, I wrote um, that the character's mentally ill mother was kidnapped 15 years ago and she'll stop at nothing to find her. So, like, the smuggling is just to, like, monetize, figuring out, like, the journey. Um, and that would maybe have, have her have a hard time trusting other people or accepting help. And I kind of wanted her to be religious, too, just so we could do things like be like, is God on our side? <laughs> I mean, that's pretty good. That's it good. seemed kind of fun. It's nice. Um, but here's the thing. That's like, a, is... that's like a fully fleshed out art back backstory. I love yeah. it. Yeah. So here's the thing you need to consider, though. And this is something that, a, and I don't want to say a good DM, but a, a considerate DM will do in what's called a session zero, which is basically what we're doing today is mm -hmm. in knowing in this, you want to have this background for your character when you are sitting around the table with your other players, make sure that that is not in conflict. Let's say you have someone in the party who's right. super religious and they may take offense to that. Or Right, well, I don't know about the religion of the world either. Like I, I, I thought it might be um, compelling and I don't know anything about the, the world that we're gonna play in and what the dwarf religions are, but also, yes, I certainly would not want to offend right, anyone but that's... at all. But that's right. what a session zero is for, what we're doing. Right. So let's say if we all, you know, we get through this, we play again, we make it a thing, you know, the session zero will be like, okay, my character's super religious, you know, and, you know, I'll take something from my D&D &D character. She is a paladin of tear. So someone who is very opposed to the idea of, of doing something right and taking the righteous path would probably rub up against that character, not me personally, but the character, my character and that character may butt heads over that if it comes up in the course of the Right. Play. Well, I don't, I, maybe, maybe I'm going to ditch the, the idea in general. I think it was just like seemed um, to like pose some form of duality, but I, I don't think I'm well versed in any of this enough to possibly not step in something I shouldn't. So maybe it's a good idea to no, I mean, remove uh, that. This can be, this can be totally fine. This is why a session zero is important because you need to sit down and talk with everyone at the table. So like, you know, for those that may not realize it, Brian and I are black. And so if we sit at a table and someone wants to go, well, my character is an escaped slave or my character owns yeah. slaves. And we're laughing because someone did this on a panel I was on and I almost jumped over the table. Um, wow. Yeah, they were very proud of, of a game with slavery in it. And I was like, oh my God. Um, yeah, and I feel like elements of elements of characters' backstories can still work because it's how the players themselves are going to how they're going to play once things are happening. But yeah, I like the session zero for putting an absolute no on okay, like I I can't be at a game where this is happening or this is not going to work. Right, of course, and generally, like I, I someone who is not religious, it seems like maybe it's a bad idea for me to <laughs> explore that just for. Uh, character duality so i might i might drop that in general especially while i'm learning i mean that could be something that you could explore though because i am so i am my character is a paladin but she is a paladin of vengeance but she is very much i'm gonna do the right thing no matter what even if it skirts that morally gray line so you can have a character that has faith but still kind of skirts that line and it's not that it's not okay because a lot of people like I am I am very um, tomboyish I don't like skirts and dresses and stuff like that but we've had occasions where my characters had to dress up and be um, you know girly for lack of a better word stereotypically girly and it helped me grow both as a person and as a character and as a player so oh that's as, cool yeah so as long as you have a good group that can sit and talk about these things before you hop into adventure that's what a session zero and boundaries and safety tools are for. And we can talk about safety tools once everyone's made their character. But, you know, that is the basics of setting up your character and your backstory can always evolve and change because my character's backstory has changed over the course of yeah. rivals. So cool. nothing is written in stone. You could even change your mind. Like while other people are, are working on their characters, you could be like, oh my God, I have this great idea. Instead of this thing, this is what I want Barbara to be about, and you could totally do that. Hey, Tanya? Yes. 
Yes, Gary. I don't know if you're uh, monitoring uh, my chat, but it both in both mine and yours, I just want to point out that um, people are really enjoying this, and they and they uh, there's a lot of comments about how you're doing a great job as a, a DM. Uh, oh, so I just want to let you. you know that people are, people are giving you high high marks already. Well, thank you so much because I. I am a very anxious and nervous DM. Um, when I said that I felt like I might, I'm very nervous and I might throw up is because performance anxiety. Um, <laughs> and you know, every time before I stream, before I do a panel, before I do a talk, I have the same anxiety. So thank you all so much. Um, so question, how's everyone feeling? Do we want to do one more character creation and then take a little break so people can stretch? and get water, get, get a bio. Um, <laughs> who wants to uh, are we, uh, Has Shannon fully created her character now? Yes, you know, for the purpose of starting out as okay. a level one adventurer, uh, Shannon, you are good. Um, so who wants I'm ready to, to rumble. Yeah. All right, so Bob, Bob the Hill Dwarf Barbarian is, 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 is on the roster. Yes. I think I'm pretty much good to go too. All right, um, Adam, you want to go next? Sure. All right, let me, uh, I wish I could have changed that before we started. I'm so sorry. It bugs me so much. Um, so Barbara's You just ready. need to like nudge, nudge the thumbstick every few minutes or whatever. Oh, I, I know. It's like literally yeah, like, I just have to like reach over. I don't even have to move. Yeah. But it's just so irritating. Um, yeah, I have mine in animal talking mode where it's set to never go to sleep, so. Oh my God, I need to do that. Uh, da, 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 da. where are you? Cause can I'm you actually turn off that like weird uh, thing, Gary, where it uh, like dims? Um, mine, mine's never done that. I don't know. I think that's a. I think that. I, th I think that might be a separate setting than sleep mode. It's like oh. a. It, I think there is like a dim thing and. Yeah, it's uh, like a manual thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, Adam, which one is your character? Um, Smoop. I see Smoop. What? Yeah, my name. Smoop? My name is Smoop. <laughs> Who did that? <laughs> tell us. Uh, tell, tell us. Tell us about Smoop. Uh, uh, what do you want to know about Smoop? Smoop well, is I mean, a. What's Smoop's uh, deal? Uh, Smoop mm. is a very charismatic uh, changeling uh, that uh, has a dark secret from their past. And uh, is uh, basically everybody's friend and everybody's enemy. Oh wow! Oh, and, what, like and what's the race work. and the class that you're going with? Smoop is a bard. Okay, so so Tanya, I, I do have a question for you. Bards, I've never quite understood. I know that bards are a whole thing. I used to play the bard's tale when I was a kid. But I always, have, from the little that I do know about, like d how Dungeons and Dragons is it is portrayed in popular culture, mm -hmm. there is this notion that like bard, that, that bards are kind of like this weird class that no one really knows like what their utility is. Is like what 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 do bards bring, quite literally to the party? So I've never played a bard, but uh, one of our our cast members plays a bard, and they are sick as can be because bards can do things with words and song. So basically, you ever had a friend, that one friend that could talk their way out of anything? That would be the bar. Yeah, that used to be me at school. <laughs> so, you know, you had the silver tongue friend. They could talk their way out of anything. They could literally, you know, talk the pants off someone they want to sleep with. They could talk their way out of a situation and not wind up in jail, for instance. Or they could mm -hmm. turn that silver tongue lethal and, um, you know, there's a thing called dissonant whispers where you could lean in and tell this person horrible, horrible things about themselves and they will be so shook that they won't be able to act. They may fall prone. They may run away screaming because you've- Is it like a Jedi mind trick kind of thing? Kind of. Um, or like the Umbrella, like the Umbrella Academy character, yeah. Uh, can you explain the Umbrella Academy character? Oh, yeah. I've not seen it. Um, there was one character, I can't remember specifically from the comics, but from the show, she, her, her ability was to sort of like say, you know, I heard a rumor and whatever she said would kind of come to pass, whether it was changing someone's mind, changing a tiny bit of reality. Yeah, that's, that's wild. 
Yeah. Um, and can they? And is it like so? Bards and musicians can they also like play like magical like cast spells with their with their music and things like it's that? It's funny you ask, Gary. Ah, yes. Okay. As Smoop, I uh, do possess some bagpipes, a lute. I knew you'd have a lute flute. in there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> what was the last thing? A pan pipe? A pan flute. A pan flute, okay. Bagpipes, lutes, and pan flutes, okay. I hate this yeah. guy already. <laughs> wow. wow, so... I mean, if you... So here's the thing. Job well done. You can have... You can have strife within your party, but it's usually frowned upon to kill the other people you're traveling with, for the most part. <laughs> there can be exceptions made to this. You only said frowned upon. You only said frowned upon, right? Frowned upon, yes. Hmm. <laughs> Frowned upon. Smoop, Smoop sounds like the kind of character where he'd be like, oh, you know, the kind of music I'm into, you've probably never heard of it. You know, that kind of guy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, you know, I learned this from the fairies. You've probably never heard of them. Oh. <laughs> but also Smoop's the kind of guy who convinces you it's the best music ever. And then suddenly you're all about bardcore. You are so hardcore. We got a we got a we got a hipster in the in the party. I have a question. All of us kind of sure. went away and created our came up with our own ideas of like classes that we want to play. Yeah. But it seems like also beyond just that, you need to think about like the party balance, right? Like you wouldn't want to have like if we all said, oh, we all want to play barbarians, you would probably say, oh no, don't do that. Like you want more of a mix than that, right? So I would say a mix would be ideal. However, um, sometimes you can have all of one character class um one of my friends is in a game that is all bards and you know while bards may not walk around with a giant long sword they can still be pretty strong and pretty effective in combat or you know it's all about the different ways in which you use your character and your class and your skills but as beginning players i would strongly suggest you have someone who can at least either heal or has a skill in medicine because what if you run across something so smoop has seven hit points that's only two more hit points than a kobold and if something if a tree falls on you you will die so uh, one thing that i know about kobolds from playing world of warcraft is they're basically just trash mobs right they're easy yeah to kill. yeah so i'm kobolds, fairly dexterous though True, <laughs> but you know, or let's say, let's say you annoy Gary's character, and since oh, Gary's, that's guaranteed to happen. And uh -huh. Gary's character is like, you know what? I don't like this guy. Let uh -huh. me just and that ship has sailed already. <laughs> and then he uh, <laughs> stabs you in in your sleep or something, and you're prone and you're asleep, and he gets a sneak attack. Well, you died in your sleep because you got stabbed through the heart. Sorry. <laughs> You I have don't know. No I've I've pretty great passive perception to know that Gary is a sleaze and is gonna try and stab me in my sleep. Wow. You don't know. You don't know me. You don't. You don't know anything <laughs> about my character. I haven't told you who I am. You don't know. Uh, you don't know me. You'd be amazed what I. You're making a lot of judgments, Adam, based on a character you've never <laughs> met and know nothing about. Smoop, you don't know me. <laughs> oh. Wow. <laughs> What did you say, Brian? Sorry. You make me want to. No, no, this, this happens. You make a me. Lot, yeah, Jen. no, I'm. It's. I'm having a hard time not going there myself right now. Oh, go for it's it. Fine. Go for you it. You make me want to smoke. Smoke. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> Uh, Smoop's already. We haven't even finished creating the party yet, and Smoop's already emerging as like the one guy. We're like, can we? Can we just get fucking get rid of this guy? <laughs> we're just gonna wake up one morning, and they're all just like, like, remember that? Remember that? Didn't we have a bard with it? No, no. And no one ever spoke of it again. That's because I'll have killed Gary and disguised as him, and you won't even know it. Wow. I'm, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pitch a TV show that's set in a fantasy universe about a band of D and D adventurers, oh and it's, it's going to be called that. So it's going to be called that. So Smoop, and basically Smoop <laughs> fucks up every week. He's going to be like the Urkel of the group. Oh He's no. Fuck up every week. And like, Whatever, and, and, and like completely, completely like wipe the party every week. And he's like, did I do that? And like, yeah, fuck you, Smoot. <laughs> Is the signature move just turning into a sunfish? Is that yeah. like the signature? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and then he busts out a big, that's just part of his catchphrase. He busts out a giant fish. I have plus three animal handling. So of course. 
Oh my god, you're gonna call a fucking dolphin out of the sea or some bullshit. <laughs> well... <laughs> Don't give him ideas. I oh, as <laughs> So as the dungeon master, I can say no. Or, a favorite thing is yes and or yes but. So you could do mm -hmm. that, but what is the consequence of, let's say, let's say Smoop does decide that he wants to lead the party and he challenges Brian's character. It's like, okay, well, Brian's character is a higher class bard and can cast Vicious Mockery at level three because he did really well at bard school. So I'm like, you can do that, but what's the consequence? Are you prepared to let your character die? Because mm -hmm. restricting your players to things where it's like, the rules don't say X, that is not fun for anybody. So a lot of DMs will go, yes, and or yes but yes and what happens next or yes and what happens if you fail if you want to do something that is so just no one would think you could ever succeed unless you get like a nat 20 plus you've got a plus 10 on whatever the skill is and let's say yes and you're probably going to fail what's what's the outcome of this because you don't want to discourage people from trying things because we're all supposed to have fun if it's not fun for anybody, then people aren't going to play. Um, that adds up. Yeah. What is uh, Smoop's uh, class? Did I miss that? Oh, he's a bard. Uh, That's right. Yeah, he's bard. a bard. So he's a, a fluid he changeling. He races changeling. Changeling bard. Okay. Yes. So, oh, that's right. Because you said you wanted to be able to turn. You wanted. You wanted to be able to change yourself into Henry Cavill, right? Uh, that was your, that was your that was Cavill. Sorry, that was your big dream. I, well, that's one of my big dreams. Is that why you have unarmed strikes? So you uh, can like mm, reload your oh. arms. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, you well, we, we, we were all oh, we were yes, all please. getting we were all getting thirsty this morning because I don't know if you saw it, but Henry Cavill posted like a two-hour Instagram video of him stripping down to a tank top and building a gaming PC. It was like the horniest thing I've ever seen. I saw it. And I'm just like I've just got a computer. Unbelievable. I'm just like, okay, I like Henry Cavill, I love him as Geralt, but he's building a computer. And maybe it's just me, but I'm like, building a computer has never been a sexy thing. I'm sorry. And I like oh, Henry Oh, I think Cavill. it's sexy. I would absolutely I mean, want to hang out with him. I mean, if it's not sexy for you, Henry Cavill... I, don't, I mean, I don't think it's sexy it. when I do it, but when <laughs> Henry Cavill does it, like, it automatically I mean, becomes like, sexy. But if it's painting minis, too, exactly. I'm like, this, I've never been so fascinated by somebody painting <laughs> Warhammer minis before. <laughs> We should get please, Henry. Please, please oh, continue. Oh my God! Can we get Henry Cavill to join us? That would be hilarious. We can try. <laughs> Let's see. Well, can we see if we can reach out to him. He's ner he's nerdy enough. Why not? Right. Oh my I've God! I've been trying to get Henry Cavill to join me for years. Dear oh. Henry. <laughs> <laughs> so if anyone watching has a right. link to Henry Cavill, um, but it looks like uh, Adam. Have fans for this. Right. Uh, so Adam, it looks like your character's pretty done. Did you have questions? Did you have thoughts about what you've done? Did you want feedback? Uh, yes, definitely feedback. I I have no idea what I've done. Um, so you you're. I'm and, and, and sorry, and, and sorry, Adam. Could, sorry, sorry, Adam. Could you recap your backstory for me one more time? Because I didn't. I don't know if I if I got it the first time. Oh, my, uh, my backstory. Uh, so the people who know me, th this is this is tied into my uh, main flaw as a character. The people who knew me when I was young know my shameful secret, so I can never go home again. And do, and do you know what your shameful secret is? Are you asking me to tell you, or are you just no? I'm just I'm just asking you. Do you, as the player, know what your character's shameful secret is, or do you just know that you have a shameful secret? Okay. Of course. What is it? Shameful. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so I can, I can I can make a few educated guesses. Well, here's a fun thing. So that's something where Adam could come to me as a DM and go, here's this secret, incorporate it into the story as you will. So I could then, you know, without the other players knowing, say, for example, have an NPC. And when you meet, if when you meet this NPC, Adam's character could be like, it's you. And then that could be a opportunity for role playing out this kind of backstory moment because another thing you want to do as a dm and as a player learning to share the table is give people their highlight their spotlight moment 
and not have it always be about you or the, the thing that you got, went and slain. Everyone, if, and if it's not feasible, especially in a streamed game or a home game, everyone should have some chance to shine or do something fun. And even if it's not everyone in every episode, every session, at least once someone should have a chance to kind of have that heroic moment, you know? Okay, sounds good. Um, but it looks like Adam, let me go okay. back to your character. I did not, I went the wrong way. Oh, your DMs are up. I there fixed it. Um, I forgot I had oh. screen share on. It was a Brian. <laughs> um, I will <laughs> fix that later. Um, so yeah, so you are have unarmed strikes. So you don't have any weapons is what I'm seeing. And you just prefer to use your hands, uh, correct? I thought I had a dagger. Um, you did Maybe not. Did wrong. So let's see. Uh, manage equipment. It may not show on the screen. So weapon, weapon. So basically you have to add it to your inventory. Okay. Um, so you just want to, do you want one or two daggers? Uh, just a single dagger. Okay, so now when you go to actions, um, why is it not yeah. there? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, so if I go to my equipment, I can see I have a dagger in there. Okay. Um, oh, you have to check the box. There you go. So you have two daggers. That's what it was, yeah. So now, whenever there's combat, you will whatever you will roll a d20, and you'll add mm -hmm. three, because that is your bonus. Okay. So, you know, if, if we say run into a pack of wolves, and you roll, and you've got two daggers, so I have to see if you get more. At level one, you probably just have one attack. So you would, but you would yeah. use both, like you would dual wield your daggers. Um, I see. And so you roll a three and then depending on the armor class, so this number up here is the armor class. That is the number you, or if someone was attacking you, they'd have to roll at least a 12 to hit you. If you they rolled an okay. 11, it would be a contest of strengths. Whoever has a higher strength would be the one that actually does the damage. So if you win, you defend and they don't hit you. If they win, they hit you and then roll damage. Um, and so this is what I was talking about with different dice. So if you successfully hit a creature, you roll a d4, basically the caltrops of your dice, and you add a one. And the fun thing is with daggers, oh, you can either okay, okay. you can either be in melee range, which is like right face-to-face -face combat, or you could throw something up to 20 feet away or 60 feet, I think. Um, so if you spot someone across a clearing, if you know, I'm squishy, I don't want to hit that person because I am squishy and I don't want to get in their face, I'm mm -hmm. going to throw my dagger at them. And then, you know, the further away it is, the more of a chance it won't hit them. But you cannot get right in combat and melee range because as a, as a level one wee character, you may not always want to mix mm -hmm. it up with everyone. Leave that to the barbarian or whatever other class that people are um, uh, dreaming of roses. I, I know the box that I need to click. Thank you. I use D&D Beyond all the time. Um, can so I ask yeah. a question? Sure. Um, in D&D, can the party ever get separated or are they always together as a group? <laughs> uh, you can absolutely uh, separate your party. There's actually, I know there's a, a nerdcore filk song about never split the party. Um, mm -hmm. you can, so I think actually in Rivals, we're kind of split up at the moment where some of us went into a creepy house and the rest of the party stayed outside because my character had an item that I was the only one allowed in the house because I had this item and everyone else was outside. Um, you can do that. And so as a DM, you then have to kind of balance when are you showing the group that is the center of the action. So like if two of you go off in the woods and you're looking for a lost centaur, for lack of a better example, but it's a very special centaur, you have to find it. And two of you stay um, in town and talk to NPCs. So as the DM, I'd have to figure out when am I showing the group, the duo that stayed in town and what are you discovering as you talk to people? 
and then the folks off in the forest find that good cut point just like with a film of okay and now we cut to the forest where Brian and Shannon are seeking the centaur hopefully they will find it before the sun goes down otherwise things will get bad you know things like that so it's, it's all about I'm the getting the sense I'm getting the sense from both chats that it's ill-advised. It's, it kind of feels like the same thing as like in a horror movie when someone says, hey, let's split up, and everyone in the audience is going, no, don't do that. I mean, no one said it's a good idea, but you can do it. Right. So this would be a yes, right. but. Thanks, thanks, yeah, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so at some point out at level one, we don't want to split the party. But, you know, as you get to be more seasoned adventurers, as you get to be um, like higher level, and sometimes it just happens that way. Um, we had a kid, you no, know, for instance, you know, and I keep going back to Rivals, but that's my best example where we rotate our DM. So every season, someone else is the dungeon master. So we split the party, quote unquote. So the character the DM normally plays is off doing whatever. And they are then running the adventure for us for those 10 episodes. Okay. But as, as we squishy characters, I would not split the party. I, or I'd say, yes, you could do that. And what do you think will happen? Hopefully you have a second character sheet ready. So. Um, I'm, I, I, it's, 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 that sounds like kind of high level stuff that we're, we, we would be getting ahead of ourselves where we're at. But I'm just curious, like, w is, would that be the decision of the players to do that? Or could you, as the DM, force the party to split for storytelling purposes? Um, I could if it, I could. But there should be a compelling reason where, or let's say if somebody is hurt in combat, they're not dead, but they're hurt badly enough where bringing them with you would be a detriment to the party. Where right. trying to carry someone, like either literally carrying them until you get them to a healer, or you leave them in town and the next day they wake up and they go try to find you because now they're healed if you don't have a healer in the party, for instance then that will be a story reason to go, well, Gary's character is far too injured to be taken with you. He can't walk on his own. But if you can wait till the morning, the healers can attend to him. And in the morning, he'll be okay. And you all can go no, about No, we gotta way. go. We gotta go. Wow. We can't wait till morning. That's cutthroat. Wow. wow. Yeah. Smoot, Smoot will absolutely leave you for dead. If, you, I if, if, if I, I guarantee you right now, if I get like a stone in my shoe and I'm like, I just need a minute, guys. And he guys going to be like, no, we can't wait. Sorry. Gone. It's always nice to know which party member is always having a mental inventory of everything in your pockets as well as theirs. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, gar I guarantee you, Brian, Smoop cannot wait to loot your corpse. Cannot wait. <laughs> Smoop can try. So this, so this, I Barbara love. Barbara won't allow it. Right, I love the thinking emote up because this is literally your DM the whole time you're playing. Just so you know, like, oh god, they want to do what? I planned for you to get to this one spot, and now you're focused on this chair, and now it'll take four episodes to get wherever it is you're going. So that is why my little person is still thinking. Um, but did you have other questions, Adam? Before we take a short break, it's been about an hour twenty, and we've got two more characters to get through. And then if we have time, I want to try to start off an adventure and see how we do. Oh, yeah, I think we should definitely get get these characters up and running before we finish the session. That would be great. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I have much other questions. Uh, oh, well, I what are your questions? Though? I want to make sure that you have your questions are answered. Um, and if you have concerns um, or things that are not clear, this is these are the moments to ask so people can learn. Believe it or not, I, I like. I think this. I've never used this website before, obviously, having not played. But like, it 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 really does help make things a lot easier. Kind of giving you descriptive uh, tips for everything. So it's actually been kind of a breeze to create the character because of that. Yeah, I mean, I I love it, and. Um... It is something I've used for a long time. And is this an official D&D &D resource or is this like a fan made thing? No, it's a D&D &D resource. Um, I said, I don't know if Obo Lauren. Beyond is yeah, I don't know if Obo Lauren is still in the chat, um, but she is a community manager and that's what we use for rivals, whether or not we are 
in studio or or um, remote. And actually, I refreshed the extension so those watching at home, you can see everyone's character now. Um, and we can see, I think that's Brian's character, even though we've not yet finished him. As long as you have a name, class, and I think HP, you will show up in D&D Beyond. Okay. So if is that we something we should also be doing? Uh, if you want. So whoever is the streamer of the campaign. So Gary, if you wanted to grab that extension when we take a break, you could have this extension on your stream and it'll show everyone the character, the hit points, and their name. And then people can, can I actually add that within the stream though, or would I have to restart the stream? Nope. You can uh, go to your your uh, Twitch dashboard and add it as extension. And so if someone clicks on Did Barbara, you know they can then see Barbara's attributes. They don't see the whole character sheet, but they do see her All basic right. attributes. Okay, yeah, so we'll talk, so when we take a let, let's let's do it. We'll take a, a, a break in a minute and you can talk me. I've got my dashboard up right now, but I'm gonna need you to point me in the right direction. Excellent. Yeah, that will only work for straight, um, for being on the channel direct. It will not work if you're in the squad stream. The extensions don't show up there. Oh, really? Oh, okay. I did mm -hmm. not know that, but I can show Correct. you that for later. Um, so mm -hmm. if you're, like, directly on my channel or directly on Gary's channel, you'll see it. But if you're looking at the squad link, it won't show up, apparently. Um, all right. Okay, but I should still add it for people who are, who are only watching my stream, though, right? Who aren't doing yeah. the squad thing. So the other, the one okay. downside is... Right. That overlay, that extension, will mean you can't show um, closed caption extension if you have it enabled because they take up the same place. Oh, you got to pick one or the other. Okay. Correct. All right. Um, and and we can talk about accessibility once we are done with characters because there are other options for closed captions. Just Gooseman Codes is good if you are by yourself and streaming but if you do a stream and you want to show everyone's captions um i have to find the name of it but there's one you can set up that's web-based and you literally just add a window to everyone like somewhere on the overlay so you could do that and you know you you'd be able to have captions it's a little bit more fit okay. set up but people that do rpg streams have been using it more and more because accessibility is important um so if you want we Got can it. take a quick break and then we'll uh, take care of Brian and your character, and then we'll uh, get into some adventure. How does that sound to everyone? That Should we give our ca characters some? I'm I'm fine. To, I'm happy to just to say I don't need uh, to go to the bathroom with him. I'll I'll, I'll uh, take my character out for some fresh air. Sure, go take a walk. Everyone, take a walk. Stand up. Yeah. And stretch. <laughs> um, I'm going to mute our mics. Oh, no, I'm I won't mute our mic. I'm just gonna throw up. I'm going to mute mine. Okay, well then everyone's muting their mics, so never mind. I'm going to throw up the BRB screen on my stream. Uh, everyone watching at home, please go take a walk, take a stretch. Um, enjoy. All right, you know what? I am going to take a, I am gonna take a BRB because I'm going to go get a drink. I'll be right back. Yes. So there, you can still see this. You can still see our, our char my character poor thinking forever. Get drink, get water, go stretch, do everything, and then we come back. We will uh, talk to Brian and get his character together, and then Gary will take care of yours. I see. I see Gary out there looking at people's um, character sheets when they step away. I see you. <laughs> All right, I am gonna go upstairs and like in the game. Uh, feel free to roam around. <laughs> um, Uh, Shannon, you feel free to run around if you would like. I'm going to show my house really quick before I get a bio break. Here's my kitchen. And <laughs> don't look at the G. There are no GM sheets. Mine is all on my phone that I took in my pocket. I use D and D Beyond Mobile App, and thanks everyone for the follows and everything else. Um, here is my bedroom. I've got a fan in there, which is very loud. Um, I'm 
there is my crown and royalty dress that I have that I've been wearing. Uh, thank you all again for all the follows for coming on by. Oh, thanks, Michael. How are you? And again, sorry for no uh, alerts, but I do want to have a nice version of this to upload to uh, YouTube. So I'm going to actually do a little bit of video editing. And Lauren, I don't know if you were still here, but we are using D&D Beyond. Um, the bathroom. Yeah, I love it. Um, we don't use well, it on. Are we wandering around? Oops. I'm just wandering around showing my house. There's a fish I in the way. It. Oh no. There's a fish on the stairs. There's a fish I on the stairs. Do. There's a fish on the stairs. And I oh, swear, did Adam did Adam get me stuck in the basement because I I cannot get around. <laughs> I can't. Adam. I can't. God. Wait. <laughs> Adam, Adam is showing this weird fish. Okay, this is hilarious. I can't get past Adam. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna take out a net, sir. Adam. Oh, it... It... <laughs> oh, it won't let me hold. I can't hold the. Sorry. All right, I'm being nosy now upstairs. Ooh, I love the study. All right, I'm gonna look shocked at at this fish while it makes very strange noises. Uh, yeah, I know, Canaeus. I was just gonna like pull out an ax on Adam. So y'all hang out at, or whoever's here, please feel free to chat. I will BRB. Where's Tanya's able sisters? Uh, that's a map question. I never know where it is. Oh. I have to look every time I go to a person's island, especially who've done up amazing designs. I'm like, great. Do you know where anything is? No. Friend uh, built theirs up and had a okay. sign on the ground that said, not the airport. Because, yeah, I'm like, okay. Do a quick bit of shopping while I wait. This is fun, though. I've also I've also put a bard together, so I'm wondering, will that go well in the same party or not? Hmm. Yeah. So before I create my class, I'm going to ask Tanya about that, like knowing what we already know about the party, you know, kind of composition. What what would, what would be most useful to the group? Because you know, it's not. I, I'm a team player. I think. I, I don't know. Like in, in in my experience, and it's been ages. It will. Um, not looking at that comment in Tanya's chat, will you be able to harmonize? Be quiet. Um, it really does fall down to, you know, some people talk about what they want to bring to the table before. Some people just have an idea in their head. I really think most party dynamics can can work if you don't, you know, if you know what kind of adventure you're going in on and you know, you know, the person running the game has said, okay, this is going to be a lot of combat or it's going to be a lot of this or a lot of that. You can come with an idea of, okay, maybe if we're going to be fighting battles, five bards wouldn't be the optimal makeup of a party. But right. otherwise, I feel like things can work out no matter what. Um, I'm just, I'm just staring at this giant I mean, fish. And I, I, I was in a high-end Warcraft raiding guild for years, and I remember mm -hmm. there used to be a lot of like, oh, sorry, you can't come with us because you know we need, you know. You're, you're the wrong class like you know I, I used to remember like if you were a priest in warcraft you could always get a party because everybody wanted right. healing. like they always wanted to always wanted priests and healing classes but uh or and tank think, you know as tanya said that's a really valid that's really valid like you're going in as a set of level one characters perhaps you want somebody who can do oh who God. has this skill and perhaps you want somebody who can heal and perhaps you want somebody who can right you know be a distance so yeah there's a lot but just like wow is sort of like a good translation of that where you know you're doing a very specific thing when you go on raids and you know you're going to need very specific that 
not set, um, assortment of skills. So yeah, it makes sense to say, okay, no, that class is not going to be helpful here. But I feel like D&D is a lot more, it, you know, it's a lot more theater of the mind. It's a lot more, the point of making a character is you're going to throw this character into the world and they have to basically make their way through it. So yeah, maybe when a challenge comes up that wouldn't necessarily be a challenge for your class, you can figure it out based on your skills and based on your imagination. Like, okay. I, I, I am very self-conscious by the fact that I'm talking to Adam's large fish. Yes, thank you. I, as soon as I saw that fish, I just immediately went back up the stairs. I, I it. Um, Adam, can you put instead. your fish away so that Shannon can come back? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go sit on this leather couch and watch Tanya's big screen TV. <laughs> See, that's a good plan. Um, yeah, because I uh, Shannon is not back yet, correct? No, she's she's wandering around in the living room right now. I'm watching like some kind of Godzilla show on TV. This is pretty awesome. Nice. I'm All here. Right. I was just chewing my snack, so I had uh, my uh, my mic off. <laughs> nice. I, I love that outfit, Brian, so much. Oh, I can't put my wand away, can I? Oh, I'll put it away when I sit down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, maybe not. Oh, I can't sit there because I put that. I think you know what? I think those away. shelves are those shelves on the wall stopping from sitting there. That's so. Bogus. I think so, yeah. I hate putting rooms together in Animal Crossing because you get everything aligned up perfectly and then the game is like, nope, you actually can't sit there. Yeah, Tanya, I'll scooch over and you can sit next to me. This is what happens in IRL with oh. I just go with these um, um, blue diamond almonds and they, they come in a variety of flavors and it's the salt and vinegar flavor. I'm, I'm addicted to them. I can't get enough of them. Blue diamond almonds? Blue Diamond, not Lou Diamond, oh, Lou oh Diamond Phillips. Wait, Lou Diamond Phillips has a, has a brand of nuts? I mean, <laughs> if he did, I would definitely check them out. But I'm... look, I'll check, here, here, look. This is, here's your free product placement. Um, Blue Diamond, bold, salt and vinegar flavored almonds. Oh yeah, they have some Phillips. lime ones too. These are real, yeah, they have, uh, they have like Thai sweet chili, sriracha, they have all these good flavors, but this one here, this is the, there's a wasabi one that's really tangy, but this is my favorite here, the, uh, the salt and vinegar ones. So and they're, the you know, they're, no they're low, you know, they're low carb too. So we can... are not, we're not suggesting Lou Diamond Phillips nuts on screen. That's what we're not suggesting. I mean, I mean, I, yeah, I mean now that you brought it up. Okay. I... All right. I think we should go back to playing D&D. &D. <laughs> uh, not much. Right, Cherry. On. Oh, thank you for saying that cranky girl. Um, did everyone hydrate, oh. stretch, get meds and water? Yeah, I got I some did. snacks. And I'm back. Somebody... I'm oh, finished my snack. I'm, I'm go hoping the object's voice is going to uh, filter out the ASMR chomping and crunching as I eat these. Uh... <laughs> no worries. <laughs> hey, Zest Black. How is everyone doing? All right. Um, all right, Brian, are you ready? I am. Uh, let me hold on. I... 15 windows open. Okay, there we go. So do I. Um, um, let so me I, I did back. create a character. I see. Um, and let me do a new window capture because part of D&D Beyond was getting cut off. So okay. let me remove that. I don't know why someone in my chat says they think that the almonds are high carb. I'm looking at it right now. Two grams of net carbs, five grams total, three, three grams fiber. It's all good, baby. Maybe, maybe I like they're thinking high calories. If you have a lot of them, I mean. Well, that's the problem. They are very Moorish. It's mm. hard to eat just a handful of these things. Yeah. yeah, it is. It is pointless for me to buy any small container of like almonds or cashews or pink. Like, nah, just there is no point in buying the small one at all. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, Brian, we have your character. Um, yes. You are Tiefling Bard, I see. Mm -hmm. So uh, tell us about your character and what led you to these choices. And also we need to get you a weapon because you too have unarmed strike. That was my, yeah, that was a question I had. Um, I, I really thought about um, what would be kind of fun and easy to play. I generally play spellcasters, but I've always, like, I've heard about bards and it sounded interesting to me. I know the stereotype, the stereotypical bard that's going around. I don't really subscribe to that. But um, 
it, it just seemed kind of fascinating to me. And then there was something about the tiefling race, how it's, oh, wait a second. Hold on. Um, the, the, the description here, to be greeted with stares and whispers, to suffer violence and insult on the street, to see mistrust and fear in every eye, that is, this is the lot of the tiefling. And I was like, huh, that sounds like something I could probably um, associate with a little bit. Mm -hmm. It might be fun to play in the game. Yeah. Um, and I like being a little bit infernal. Like, I'm like, yeah. You, you infernal? Could never imagine that, Brian. Just a little bit like, you know. <laughs> someone, in, someone in chat just said tieflings are the queer race in D&D. &D. Is, that, is that true? Or is that just an interpretation? I think uh, it's an interpretation. I don't... I feel yeah. like a lot of things have been adopted over the years in terms of how they're coded. And, right. Yeah. Yeah, I think some of that yeah, is... Uh, Oh, go ahead, I was just saying, I, I read that article that you sent, and I found it really interesting about uh, all of the projections and stuff on the D&D &D world. It's really interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah. Spell Theory Online. Oh, wait, let um, me find that. Hold on. Let me find that article. Um, it is Resources for Addressing Racial Stereotypes in D&D. &D. There um, it is. Is this, the connect is this connected to the thing I read recently about how which is the coast was saying they were retiring the concept of some races being inherently evil. Is that, is, is, is tied into that? Um, somewhat, but that, that article precedes that coming out, I think. It does. I, I know it mentions Gabe's creator. Um, Yeah, I don't know why I'm so much lower. I've boosted my gain all the way up. Um, it's weird because you sound fine to me. I know I yeah, sound fine for, in the call. For... Discord's am... being fine, but your oh, it's to do with the way your streams outputting it. Your streaming output is being is being a nuts right now. Yeah, I'm not sure what it is. So for those listening, because my mic, um, oh, I didn't want the rec the audio right there. But when I tried this last time, I had to stop and restart my whole computer. So I'm not sure what it is, but I connected a microphone and uh, it was being weird. Yeah, okay. and, and Troubleshooter can't find anything. So that's why you boost people in pro post-production. Oh, you didn't mean the audio. Um, <laughs> I, just checked the I just checked the stream and you sound fine to me. Yeah. No, they mean I'm sitting lower than someone. I d it could be how I'm how I am, because for some reason, Gary, on yours, mm -hmm. it looks like I'm sitting on the floor. Oh wait, yeah, you weren't. Oh, we're talking wait, about you. You weren't like that before. Like you've Hold sunk on. into the ground. What's happened? On my stream, wait, I'm fine. That... Oh my goodness, I'm, on, on mine, that is totally, really weird. There is a total glitch on okay. you. Oh, you are. Yeah. Wait, is she floor. behind the books? Oh my try gosh. Try sitting in the. Try sitting on the chair again. <laughs> oh my god, this game. Oh my god, <laughs> like, what the hell is why, happening? Why are you like this? Now you, can you get in? Okay, now, okay, you now, like now, now you're doing it. Now you're on the same level as <laughs> right, I Right, because so, you something said happened that. Something happened there and you were like, into the floor. No, because when they said that, I assumed it was the audio since we had audio issues earlier. I didn't mean, no, you meant literally. I was saying, why are you lower? <laughs> and I'm going, I'm sorry, this is I fixed why my context, audio. Context matters, y'all. Oh when the my chairs God. turn against you in the metaverse. Oh no, not the chairs. <laughs> oh my God. I know it's a Critical Role reference. Funnily enough, I've never seen any of the first um, run of Critical Role. So I just know there's a chair reference. I don't know actually what it refers to. Um, yeah. Okay, I, so... I dip in and out though. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so okay. yes, I, I built a tiefling bard. Um, kind of a, a bit of a thief backstory. You haven't really pulled hold all that together yet and I did not know what to do when it came to picking equipment that's where I completely was like oh what do I do now okay um and so like, as what are, we, a, what are we allowed like yeah um mm -hmm. so as a bard I mean you could have a short sword you could have daggers there's nothing saying that you can't have a weapon um like if you wanted to have fans for instance we could make a custom item that is a bladed fan <laughs> We're not doing that. We yet. could. Not on stream, but we could do it. <laughs> That's where homebrew comes comes in at. Um, 
But yeah, so for okay, so well. we let's go to your equipment. Um, so you didn't pick any equipment, correct? Correct. Okay, so as and well, let's say for a weapon, what would you like? Um. Okay. Is there? How are you getting to the screen? You clicked on. Is it manage equipment or? Yes, manage equipment. So. Click on manage equipment. Oh, got it. And then weapon. And then you oh, yes. And you can even okay. say, I'm proficient in this. So then you can only, then it only will give you things you are proficient in. So you could have a hand axe, you could have a light, you could carry a long sword, it, it looks like. Um, I'm just, I'm just looking at this like a boomerang. Oh my gosh. That would be completely, ridiculously inefficient. True, but it could be fun. It could be fun. He said, constantly thinking about it now. Um, <laughs> Honestly, I love the bo the boomerang idea. Um, I think probably crossbow, like a. What is the difference between hand and light? So hand uh, is like a show me. yeah. Cool. So when you think of light crossbow, think kind of like what Varric carries in Dragon Age. Mm -hmm. um, that is that is a crossbow. It's not a heavy custom one, but it's something you could wield one handed if you wanted, I think. And it's got a good range. Um, so someone 80 feet away could be a target. OK, I was thinking more about the hand crossbow, almost like I assume that that's closer to having like a small, like a, a small pistol type deal. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. You could have that. So we could add that. Can we add two? So your dual wielding crossbows? Bad good? It's not bad. But so here's my Are question. You reload those? Yes. That is, that is kind of a badass image, dual wielding crossbows. I mean, yeah, I'm going in with image first. Now someone's about to ask me a legitimate logical question. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Worry like, about I that later. Like Wow. I feel like a bard is, is the kind of person who is predominantly um, I mean, look, interested showy, in looking at Showy yeah. and impractical is kind of a whole mood. You know? Right. Very much so. <laughs> like, totally useless, but you look good being totally useless. Yeah. Um, yes, I mean, you could do it, okay. or you could have a hand crossbow and a short sword. Hmm. I mean, whichever. Ooh, that'd be, well... Um, oh, let me look at the short sword. Where'd it go? Um, um, so you could actually just okay. search short sword. Um, oh, you could have a moon touched sword. Moon touched short sword. I cannot talk today, apparently. Smoop can't touch my short sword. If that's where you're, Smoop can't touch it. No. Nope. What is what does moon we'll, touched we'll mean? See. What 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 magic does that confer? Um, so when you click on it, it tells you. Um, in darkness, the unsheathed blade of the sword sheds moonlight, creating bright light in a 15-foot radius and dim light for an additional 15 feet. So, let's say you wind up in a cave, um, and, and Brian's character wouldn't have this problem because tieflings can see in the dark, but let's say you're a human and you wind up in a cave and you don't have a torch, you could literally pull out the sword and have 15 feet of light. That's cool. Yeah. That sounds like a human problem, not a tea plane problem. <laughs> so that's a y'all thing, not a me thing. Wow. Um, but yeah, I think I will, I would add the short sword and take away one of the hand crossbows just to be slightly practical. Yes. So now you have a short sword and a hand crossbow. Um, and now I love that you can edit my character sheet and I just keep refreshing. I'm like, oh. Yes. So. There you have it. So you have a hand crossbow, which is a ranged weapon, and a short sword. So if someone gets in your space, okay. you can now attack them. Sweet. Um, so spells. Uh, you have Thaumaturgy, which I have never used, but you get it as a tiefling. Um, do you mind reading that out, the Thaumaturgy cantrip? Oh, sure. Um, the thaumatur Thaumaturgy cantrip cast at will. It is, you manifest a minor wonder, a sign of supernatural power within range. You create one of the following magical effects within range. Your voice booms up to three times as loud for, as normal for one minute. 
You cause flames to flicker, brighten, dim, or change color for one minute. You cause harmless tremors in the ground for one minute. You, call, you create an instantaneous sound that originates from a point of your choice within range, such as a rumble of thunder, the cry of a raven, or ominous whispers. You instantaneously cause an unlocked door or window to fly open or slam shut, and you can alter, oh, sorry, or you alter the appearance of your eyes for one minute. So you could be Storm, basically. <laughs> I will have to prepare some speeches. Um, yes, and as a bard, you can have uh, vicious mockery, a.k.a. Um, telling people all about themselves in a way that will do damage. Uh, someone wanted oh, the boomerang. Oh, I like that. Yes, you can be like, oh, your mother smells of elderberries and your father was a goose. <laughs> so the vish, is that, and that, is that something that comes later? Um, um, I believe, let's The vicious see. mockery, is that like a later thing? Um, you should, you have two more spell slots at first level, so you, so you can add spells, and you okay. can filter it by, uh, first level, so as a bard, you can have Animal Friendship, Bane, Charm Person, Comprehend Languages, which could come in handy, um, Detect Magic, Disguise Yourself, Dissonant Whispers, which is what we talked about earlier, um, Featherfall, you can uh, Long Strider, I'm not sure what that does. Um, Unseen Servant, which basically you have an, a ghostly unseen servant, which I, for moral reasons, would not have if I ever played a bard, because it would feel weird. Um, you could speak with the animals. I don't know what Tasha's hideous, hideous laughter is. I would like to. Okay, I, I'm, I'm definitely getting, <laughs> getting oh, some no. ideas now. Oh dear, oh dear. Um, okay, so I think I would like to add. I can get two of these. Yes, you can learn two of them and have them ready. Okay, then I would like to add dissonant whispers. Okay. And hideous laughter. Hideous laughter is uh -oh. so brutal. Mm -hmm. All right. Those I'm having your, flashbacks. Those, those <laughs> are your spell slots. Okay. So now you can do that. Um, have you put anything in the notes about not your yet. character? Okay. Um, not yet. So you're not very strong, which is fine. Um, you are very dextrous. Well, you're dexterous. Uh, you have a high charisma, which is good for a bard. Uh, you're intelligent, with this, which is good for a bard, and you're wise. Constitution is, is a nice middle-of-the-road 10. So, um, you are pretty good. You, you know, you're not going to be the buffest tiefling out there, but you are a tiefling and ha as such have bonuses. Um, and then your passive scores are good. So the number here, these saving throws, if I say make a constitution saving throw, then mm -hmm. you wouldn't roll anything extra. You would just be like, well, I rolled whatever I rolled and I don't get to add anything, but if I say a charisma saving throw, you're going to add five. Got it. Okay. So yeah, any other questions? Because you, you filled it out pretty, pretty well. Um, are there questions, concerns, anything specific about either being a tiefling? Um, and I know Sharif is in the chat who plays a tiefling a warlock. <laughs> Um, so if you, if you have specific tiefling questions, uh, Sharif may be able to answer, um, as well. I, yeah, I, I think I'm good. I, my biggest thing coming back to this is essentially just re, reacclimating, yeah, reacclimating myself with the world and it's like, it's fictional universe. So I'm going to read up more about things and I can flesh out the notes and the backstory and things like that. Yeah. All right, so if you're good, I'm going to um, hide this for a hot second and then bring up Gary's character. Uh, Gary, um, are I'm you actually ready? also I'm gonna yeah I'm actually gonna pull because I'm streaming as well. I'm actually gonna pull my um, my browser window up to the screen so that people can see my character creation. Cool. Um, so is it is it okay if I drive? Yeah, go for it. I will just um, follow okay. along oh, what oh, you're doing. Yeah, um, and if you look at my stream, you'll you'll be able to see um, what I see. Yes, um, I am seeing what fact, you me, see right let me now. Just, let me 
let me just do it. Let me just do a little transform here real quick. Hold on. So yeah, and get, Gary uh, also uh, added the D and D Beyond overlays. So if you're watching oh, I this... I added it, but I activated it, but I'm not seeing it show up on my stream yet. I don't know how uh, to make it visible. If you hover, you can refreshed. block it. You may have to refresh your stream because I see it. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Um, okay, so let me um, hold on one sec. Sorry, bear with me. Bear with me. Still making this work here. All right. So um, let me okay. let me refresh. God's move is beautiful. Wow. 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 <laughs> so you can you can see the extension on mine because I'm not seeing it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can see it. see it. Yeah, I had to refresh and. Oh, you know it. why? Because I'm only looking at my my output in Streamlabs. I'm not looking at the actual <laughs> stream. That's why. Good yeah. job, Gary. Good job. Well, let me um, hold on a second here. Let me. Uh, there it is. Little, I see it. Something, something here. Hold on. I see it. Okay, now I see it. Uh, okay, I'm gonna move my. I'm gonna move my face, over here, so it's not in the way. Um, and then I'm also going to uh, go here. So you're actually seeing what I want to see. Oh, I got uh, out of the chair somehow. Then... How did I do that? I wasn't even trying to. Okay. Ancy DM. I want to be able to move this so that we can. OK, can, if I do that, does that make it so that you can see the extension bar and the browser's not obscuring it? Yeah, so the bar will hide itself unless you click the lock button. So I locked it so I can see it at all times. It's just. However, people at home are viewing, uh, they can, it'll, it's like the uh, window on, on Mac where it'll hide by default. Mm -hmm. How do I lock it? How do I lock it so it's on? Um, at the very bottom, right above D&D Beyond, there should be a lock icon. Oh, uh, well, hold on. I need to, I, I need to actually pull up my channel. Hold on a second. Mm -hmm. um, Hello, everyone right, watching our chats. Oh, I see it now. Okay. Yeah, so there should be a lock icon right above D and D Beyond. Oh yeah, okay. Now now it's gone away. How do I get it back? Hover over again. There we go. Now now okay. Now it's gonna stay on. Okay. Yep. Got it. Got it. Okay. Now, if you wanna uh, go back to your uh, character sheet, because we're seeing uh, stream. Yeah, I just wanna I just wanna move this browser window so it's not. <clears throat> Give me a second here, because the stream takes a few seconds to catch up. Okay, um, I got it. Evil F, please stop asking for Shannon to say hi to you. Um, we said that earlier in the stream to please be respectful. And a lot of us are not looking at the chat. So um, we're looking at the chat in moments like this where we have a little bit of downtime. But please stop asking for folks to uh, give you a greeting in the chat. And hi, Matt Mercer is gone. Right, I've seen you around. <laughs> okay, so my um, uh, cipher. If you look at my um, uh, browser window here in the street, you should be able to see what I've got so far, which is still very early. Yeah, um, I see it. I'm just gonna look at your stream because I. I've yeah, got... yeah, Tanya. I think if you keep refreshing, if you've got Gary's up and refresh, it will change as he's. Yeah, you only. Be, it should be a few seconds behind. So I created uh, yeah. uh, an aquatic half elf um, named Marengi. Uh, and it's funny about that. Nothing. <laughs> An aquatic. <laughs> that half face elf. Gary made. Hold on, wow. hold on, hold on, hold on. I gotta do one other thing. What, what, what? <clears throat> Why is it? Hold on. Nothing. No, no, it's fine. That's a everyone's, great name. I, I feel like everyone's laughing name. at me already. It's no. a great name. We're not laughing at you. It's, it's, a, it's a great name. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Marengi was actually the name of my uh, mage in Warcraft for many years, so it does actually come with some heritage. Thank you very much. I okay, I'm just remembering the TV series. Well, I mean that's where it comes from. In addition to the in addition to the dance, so you know, like the merengue. No, okay, never mind. Okay, so wow. um, I have an aquatic. <laughs> I have that an, one killed it. Moving swiftly on, oh, I have an aquatic half elf named Marengi. Okay. Um, and my racial traits are plus two charisma. Okay. And then I like this plus one to two other ability scores. I get to pick those for myself. Correct. Um, plus dark vision. I can see in the dark. Mm -hmm. Fey ancestry, which I don't yes. know too much about. So you're uh, an elf. Skill versatility. Yes. Yeah, so an elf being fey, 
you have that ancestry. So that half elf side is your fey ancestry. Okay. Okay. So I mean, so my first job, it looks like, is to is to uh, increase by one any two abilities, and my choices are constitution, dexterity, intelligence, strength, and wisdom. Yeah. So uh, which would you like? Do you have any advice like? for me? Um, well, you're a half elf. Um, so I would actually up your constitution or your strength, or those are your two things, because unfortunately there are still okay. um, racial bonuses and things like that. Um, you should, it's not gonna give you as much of a bonus as if you are either a full elf or a full human or a full, pick any, any ethnicity in d and I've been trying to get away from saying race because it's not quite really race because dwarf is is bigger than some specific kinds of dwarf um, right so yeah as as a half elf because elves are usually kind of wispy i would up your constitution and your and your strength okay i'm at so i up, I up to those two i have dark vision uh okay. thanks to your elf blood you have superior vision in dark and dim conditions well this party is going to be good if it gets dark i know that because we're all good on that yeah. You can see in dim light within 60 feet of you as if it were bright light and darkness as if it were dim light. You can't discern color in darkness, only shades of gray. Okay. And then I have to choose an additional language that I can speak. And there is a massive list. I, would, I didn't even know where to start here. Um, so you are an elf, so you'll speak elvish by default. Um, some right. of these you may never, like abyssal, Abyssal would be good if you go on, if you wind up in Avernus, which is hell in D and D. Um, Draconic, if you think you'll run across some some dragons, it could be useful. Um, what is deep speech? That I don't know actually. If someone in either chat could help me with that, because I'm not sure what deep speech is. So, what would you advise here? What what other language should I should I speak? Um. I would advise something like either Dwarvish, Common, well, you're going to get Common and Elvish anyway. I would say something like Dwarvish or Orc, because you're more likely to run across Orcs or Goblins or Halflings or Gnomes. Some of these I'm gonna you may pick, never I'm gonna, run I'm going to pick Dwarvish. Okay. And then I have, um, I have um, additional swimming speed as well, so that's nice. Okay, so those are all locked in. Now here's the big one, class. i got to pick my class. Um, yes. So here's the thing, Tanya, since I went last, and we already know what th how three quarters of the party, party is composed, I'm a team player. And Smoop's all out for himself. That he's made that much clear. <laughs> I, however, <laughs> want to I, I, I wanna help the, the team. Right. And so, given, so we have a barbarian and two bards. If we want, like, a, like what would be the most useful thing to add to that party? Um, I would say a paladin, because you can fight and you can heal. Um, mm. but yeah. keep in mind, and you can also be a paladin of vengeance. You are not locked to a lawful good alignment like you previously have been in D and D. Previously until oh, so I could be like a dark paladin. You could be a fallen paladin. So maybe you found a god that you pledged to, and you failed them, okay. and now All you're right. a I fallen have, okay. paladin. This this actually fits into the uh, backstory that I was working on for myself. So I'm going to go with it. And, and, and Paladin has a little bit of historical significance for me because I, I, I played World of Warcraft all the way back to the beta when you could only get to level 39. And a Paladin was mm -hmm. what I played. Like that was the first World of Warcraft character I ever had. So okay. I'm going to go. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Uh, it didn't ask me to add a subclass, though. So it just add another class. So that would be if you're multi-classing. So... As you go further, as you level, you could say instead of taking another level in Paladin at level two, you could take a level of Cleric or a level of Warlock. So let's say you failed your, your chosen deity as a Paladin and they've abandoned you. If you take a level of Warlock and take a Patron on, you would get powers from your Patron. And that could be an interesting conflict of... I failed this god, but this but this patron um, has taken pity on me or interest in me, and I now serve them. But with serving a patron comes things where you may or may not have to do stuff for them. Um, I don't know. I sure. um. 
sorry, they, 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 there was no, there hasn't been a choice yet to like, what kind of paladin do you want to be? Do you want to be a fallen paladin? Did, did we miss something or does that No, we're later, not there or? yet. We're not there yet. Okay, all right. So right now I'm choosing two uh, proficiencies. Uh, and my ch- I have to I get to choose what I get to choose two and um, athletics, insight, intimidation, medicine, persuasion, and religion. Correct. So since we do not have a healer, um, I would suggest a skill in medicine. Okay, medicine is one. And um, what about for my second one? Um, I guess it depends. Do you want to be intimidating? Do you want to be persuasive? Is your Paladin. Well, since we said your paladin is going to be fallen, then I wouldn't say religion because you have fallen. Yeah. What is what is what is what is what does the religion skill look like? What does that do? So if something comes up and you need to know like the history of the god that you serve, um, so my character on Rivals right. is a paladin of Tear. I am proficient in the knowledge and history and background of anything having to do with the deity of deity Tear. Okay. So I picked if, intimidation. Excellent. That that fits. Um, we're moving forward. Okay, and now I've got my ability scores. Standard array? Yes. So standard oh, array. Okay. So as and now it looks like I gotta I gotta put some yep. numbers in here in here. Yeah, so okay. remember whatever you put an eight in means you're gonna have a negative one modifier when you do rolls. So as a paladin, um I would my paladin, my lowest stat is uh, dexterity, because I'm usually walking around a heavy plate, so I'm not concerned with being very dexterous. It's come back to bite me, but mm. that's my lowest stat. Why can't I just pick 15 for everything? Do I have a pool of points that I have to divvy Correct. up here? Correct. Okay. Because if you put 15 in everything, you'd be stupidly overpowered for a level 1 character. <laughs> right. I mean, that sounds pretty good to me, though. It does, but then you would you would be one of those people that we all hate and be like, "Why are you playing this game? You can't min max." Uh, okay, so so what so what so what values should I put in for these six um, abilities here? Um, I would say your highest one should go in your strength, wisdom, and okay. Either so can I can I do all the way? Can I sorry? Can I go all the way to fifteen on those? You so the drop down. So you see the drop down on, on so go to yeah. strength. We, Weirdly, uh, the drop downs don't show where in the browser window here. You can yeah, see the window, but like when I do a drop down, it doesn't. That doesn't translate. It's it strange. Won't show on the cap, okay, you, yeah. you try again because it's show. It showed for me when we worked on Shannon's. Um, it didn't show for us on stream. So. Oh, it it's definitely not showing. I'm watching my own stream. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, let's say if you want to say your fifth, your strength is 15, you put a 15 there, okay. but that's your 15. You have so you have eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen. You have to choose. Oh, where so going. I put, basically put one of these numbers in each of the six Correct. boxes. I got yep. it. Okay. Correct. All right. What is and the difference like, between intelligence and wisdom? Intelligence is literally how book smart you are. Wisdom is kind of you have lived and seen some shit. You have you are wizened. Okay. okay, I like that. I like that. I th- I think I know where I'm going here. Okay. Um, I'm just copying um, what you're doing. What do they what do they say? Intelligence is knowing a intelligence is knowing a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is knowing not to put it in a fruit salad. Correct. <laughs> Boom. Knowledge dropped. Okay, I think I think I've got it laid out the right way. Tanya, do you see that? 15, 12, 13, 10, 14, 8? Um, I would mm-hmm. actually make your charisma higher because you took intimidation. Because otherwise you're going to have a negative role, a negative modifier when you do something requiring charisma, like intimidation. Okay, so what should I, what what should my lowest thing be? Um, I would say your lowest should be dex. Yes, I would swap dex. Maybe I'm a clumsy paladin. Not clumsy, but you're you're not going to like parkour over the rooftops of a village. Okay, all right. 15, 8, 13, 10, 14, 12. Is what all I got right, right now. All right, I'm just mimicking that. Um, yeah, because your charisma is going to really serve you, especially since you took um, that. So uh, go ahead and pick a character icon on the next. On oh the next yeah, screen. okay. Uh, well, hold on, custom background. Um, that's if you wanted to write up a custom background. So if something did not fit. Like, if you didn't want to be any of these, 
like a failed merchant, a folk hero from Baldur's Gate, uh, a city watchman, a charlatan. If none of those suited you, you could write up a custom background. But you'd have to put it in as a uh, as a homebrew item and then pull from there. Right. Okay, I picked a very handsome looking dude for my face. I um, see. And now I'm on now I'm on equipment. Wait, you didn't pick a background, go back. There's a look. Go back so. one. What what would be a good one for me? Uh go back. Do you have a paladin background? Um, so you are a paladin, that is your class. So you could be an acolyte, you could be an anthropologist, you could be simply an athlete if you want. You could be a legionnaire, a celebrity adventurer scion, if you like, which means you might be a little more well known in the realms. Um, or you could be a celebrity, celebrity adventurer scion that fell from grace, thus fitting your fallen paladin status. You could wow. be a criminal. There's a lot going on here. Yes. There's a lot going on here. Um, oh, a knight. Well, I'm, I, I'm just looking at it. I haven't picked yet. Um, Cloistered scholar. How much does this? How much does this really affect the game? This background. Um, I really. It really depends on what your DM does with it and what you do as a player to bundle that into your character's backstory. So you could take this and kind of craft that backstory from this background. Um, so okay. if there was something in there, let's say if you want to just be a noble, like you're a noble for whatever reason, you have gone off and sworn an oath to Nalzor or someone. And okay. And in your backstory, we find out, yes, you're a noble, but you know that noble life didn't suit you. You've always wanted to be an adventurer and you ran off on the eve of your wedding because you didn't want to get married to the person your family betrothed you to. And you're like, deuces, I'm out. This married life ain't for me. <laughs> and then you leave. <laughs> right, right. I, um, yeah, this is, uh, I, I'm going to go with mercenary veteran because that, again, is playing into the, the little personal backstory that I have for myself. Okay. Excellent. And now so, I'm on uh, uh, equipment. Exactly. Oh, don't, for, don't forget, you have to pick your um, tool proficiency. So oh, it can oh, be... oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You... Oh, I see it. Yeah. Um, so you are good at a game. Dive. Interesting. I'm good with land vehicles. Oh, so, so between Shannon and, and, uh, and me, we're all good land or sea. Correct. Basically. Correct. Okay. You could be good at dice. I'm a boat you. lady. <laughs> I, just I never learned see. to swim. I'm going, to be a, I'm going to be a dragon groups. chess player. That sounds. Very I don't even know what dragon chess is. It just sounds cool. What did you do, Adam? Did you change Smoop? I didn't change, change Smoop's. Uh, uh huh. Okay. He found an avatar for Smoop. Oh yep, dear. It's very. It's very Smoop. appropriate. Oh dear, I'm going to have to look. Aren't it's I? VV Smoop. It's so Smoop. It's just. Oh lord. It's just a pick of me in real life. Hmm. Mm hmm. Excellent. All right, so what did you what did you do? Oh Lord! Oh my God! It's Henry Cavill. <laughs> I, I, right. I, I don't want to. I don't want to see it. Whatever it is. Um. All right. So you picked your you picked your tool proficiency. Yes, and now I'm on equipment. Okay. What did you? Pick? Oh, I'm going to leave it alone. I will go back. Um, I, haven't picked, I haven't picked anything yet. I'm just sitting here. All right, so add items. Um, so you as okay. a paladin probably would like either a long sword or a sword and shield. Um, you can click on weapon and it will give you a lot of things. Right, I'm seeing that now. Um, I'm thinking maybe uh, two martial weapons. What about that? Would that be a good way to go? Yeah, you could do like two short swords. You could do a long sword and a shield. You could have a staff Ooh, a and a glaive. Sword. Uh, isn't a glaive usually two-handed? Doesn't it doesn't appear that way. I don't know. I feel like glaives are always like gigantic when you. Was the glaive thought, that thing I in the crawl? Glaive was a pole. Well, the, yeah, the crawl thing was the glaive, like the. Oh no, you are correct. Bladed thingy. You are correct. I'm going with a glaive and a flail. 
Uh, okay, so a glaive, I'm looking at this, it is two-handed, but you have a lot of reach oh. with it. So you could have both. It's just if you are attacking with the glaive, you can't you can't dual wield, unless you there and is. You get a morning star, like Simon Belmont, or okay. Trevor Belmont, whoever it was that had that thing. Okay. Castlevania style. Hmm. Wait, so so T Tanya, can I have a glaive and and another thing, or is it, that going to make things complicated? No, you could. It's just that when you're in combat, if you say, I attack with my glaive. You can't, you'd have to, right. like, switch weapons, which would be an action, unless we say, oh, switching weapons is a free action, and not give you a penalty for it. Because, you know, like, you okay. still have restrictions on how many feet you can move, how, what you can do. So you what about a... Sorry, go ahead. No, I say, you could have it, just if you choose to attack with the glaive, that would be all you could use unless you swap weapons or drop it and go pick it up after combat. Right, right. Um... Let me see here. Uh, what about a scimitar? Absolutely. Would that be one-handed? Yeah. Scimitar and a flail. Go I'm for it. That. Okay. Scimitar just sounds like simma, 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 simma. <laughs> <laughs> and then I've got five javelins or any simple melee weapon. Well, okay. So javelins you can throw. I like um, javelins. And then I have to choose Priest Pack or Explorer's Pack. Um, as a Paladin, I would suggest Priest Pack. Because okay. hopefully other people have... They have basic adventurer gear. And we're going to assume everyone has the basics. Rope, a tent, etc. Uh, I'm not going right. to be that pedantic DM that's like, Well, you didn't say you bought a tent, so you sleep on the ground. I'm not going to do that to people. Um That would be pedantic and mean. Um, okay. Uh, oh, I, did I see I'll go back? Hold on a second. Oh, what the hell's going on? Where did my character go? Uh, go forward. Nope. Uh, view character sheet. Okay, I'm now looking at my sheet, but I didn't, I didn't finish it. Uh, what do you... Oh, so you know what? Let's go to manage equipment. So click on equipment on the character uh, sheet. Where is it? Down. Um, down. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, do you see equipment? Oh, yeah, manage equipment. Okay. All right. Um, so do a check mark. Check off the boxes next to your equipment. And it now mm. is there. So the square boxes next okay. to... Tail, javelin, scimitar, add custom item. Because there was a thing like add like a, like a holy seal, but I don't see that now. Uh, was that in your priest equipment? It was in the priest pack, yeah. Uh... So let's see, priest. Did I screw up here? What happened? No, you're fine. Um, so manage equipment. So let's go into manage equipment and get that for you. Yeah. So I've got the three, the, the flail, the javelin, and the scimitar selected. Um, so simma, 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 simma. <laughs> simma dan now. <laughs> Lord. Is it starting equipment? What would it be? I thought it was starting equipment. So let me oh, look at equipment, other gear. Okay, equipment. Oh, here it is. I, okay, I, I got it back. I got it back. Okay. okay. So a martial weapon and a shield. Yeah. No, two martial weapons. Okay, here we go. Uh, scimitar and flail. Five yeah. javelins, priest's pack. Uh, and then holy symbol, amulet, emblem, reliquary, or holy symbol. Yeah, so you could say, like, you have an amulet. Uh, my character, her shield is her holy symbol. It has the sick. It has the rune of tear engraved on it. Um, okay. So yes. Okay, I'm gonna have the amulet, and then the dragon. Uh, not that the dragon, chest set. Okay, add starting equipment. Yep. All right. I think. Okay. Uh, okay. Added. Yes. So you are good to go, um, and because you are Is that a paladin. It? Yeah, that's it. And because you're a paladin. You will have to tank because you have the most hit points. So, oh, that's great! So that makes you, me important. Uh, yeah. So when we have combat, hey, make sure the person to put out in front. The, I mean, the, again, the one thing I remember about my main reference point for this is Warcraft, and I remember, <laughs> like, whenever there wasn't a warrior available, it's like, oh, I guess the paladin's going to have to tank. But like, no one was happy about wow. it. Wow. I mean, the. Yeah, because paladins just aren't as good at tanking. 
True. I, you know, just in terms of more important, we can debate top billing later. But <laughs> yes, you would definitely you would definitely be the prominent member of the party in encounters. Oh, I'm liking it already. Okay. So I got my character. Uh, my um, character created. Excellent. All right. Everyone has a character, and this did not take as long as I thought it would. So if you want, we can do a little bit of adventuring, if that is okay with everyone. Yeah, of course. Okay. Do, we, do we need a name for our party, for our group? Sure, if you'd like to make one. I just don't, I, I, I find it hard to believe that all four of us would agree on something. <laughs> okay, I think you, you and Smoop are going to have the I'll be side. the one to decide. Oh, no. How about we call ourselves the Smooper Troopers? No. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I, oh, I have my God, God. no. That's going to be a no from me. That's going to be a no from the you know this, this, oh. this, always, this always made me think about, like, Bon Jovi, back, like, when they first started. Like, they're sitting around in a garage somewhere, and they're like, what are we going to call the band? And John Bon Jovi <laughs> says, what about Bon Jovi? Like, why didn't he just say, fuck off? <laughs> like, like, I always I mean, found that amazing. They just, they just glared him down like, really? Really? Or Van Halen. What should, oh, we, what should yeah. we call the band, Eddie Van Halen? I don't know, Van Halen? Fuck you, Eddie. It's a thought. <laughs> just tossing it out there, guys. I just can't imagine ever telling a group like, I think we should call ourselves Woodward. Right? It's awful. Yeah. Although that, does, no, like, the, that does sound the, like a good name for like a hipsty, hipster indie kind of band. Though. Or maybe a group of carpenters. Have you guys ever seen the show <laughs> Animal Talking with Gary Whitta? <laughs> wow. <laughs> no. Oh, I, feel, I feel like there's something to uh, flesh out there. Okay. <laughs> Cypher, do you have any ideas for our... Uh... The Order of the Sunfish? Yeah, maybe as the DM you should have the honor of choosing our oh, God. Uh, party name. Um... I, I'm trying Old to think of... And smooth. Oh, God, no. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think of something that's not a pun because I don't pun well. And I think my chat would just fall over collectively if I willingly made a pun. Um, Brian, do you have any ideas? Because I'm not good at this stuff. Oh, let's see. What do we have? Two bards, a barbarian, a paladin. Got some... Oh wow! Um, I don't know what like the order of the sunfish. I mean, I, I said the order of the sunfish earlier is a joke, but it's the kind of thing where you know, since we haven't actually gotten into it as to how we all know each other or why we all know each other, that could have been the bonding moment that you know that that made us who we are. You I don't mind the order of the standing sunfish. Standing in a field holding a sunfish. I don't mind the Order of the Sunfish. Why not? Order of the Sunfish works for me. All right. I'm into order. it. Order okay. of the Sunfish it is. Or the Order of the Sunfish is born today. Yes. Um, yeah. So. The greatest day of my life. As you all, as you all uh, think about this for a hot minute, I'm going to pull up the adventurer I picked to run you through if we got a chance to play. Um, but let's take a quick a uh, couple minutes to check in with the chat because I've been basically ignoring the chat. So sorry, everybody. Um, how's Hello. everyone getting a quick shout out from Shannon? It would forever be known as the Order of the Sunfish. Adam, you've had enough attention from me. <laughs> wow. Well. It's never, trust me, it's never <laughs> enough. It's never enough. Wow, wow, wow. Um, Order of the Sunfish. So yeah, how's everyone in, in both chats doing? I just want to do a check-in before we uh, start uh, this shenaniganry and maybe get an hour and a half, at most two hours in, because I know Brian is on Eastern Time, I'm on Central, um, and Gary, Shannon, and Adam, are you on West Coast Time? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yep. Okay, I just We're want to be... We're all the same time zone. Okay, so I just want to be respectful of everyone's time and dinner times and family time, etc. So at least let's get started, and then we can uh, chat after and debrief um, on audio, the five of us, and see how doing this again could maybe work out, because I'm having fun. I hope you are too. I'm having a great time. 
Yeah. This has been really, really cool. Thanks again. Yeah, I mean, we have to at least do one more to do like one session that is just playing the game because most of this obviously is just character creation. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah, well, I got a rage, guys. I've got rage to do. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you need to rage, so we'll definitely uh, play again. All right, so um, now that we've checked in with the chat, I've got my handy map up, and I'm going to pull up a player version of this map um, that I'm going to put in our group DM, not yet in the Twitch chat, so you all can see uh, where you're going to adventure. And then I will give you... Um, the beginning of the shenaniganry. So if you check your Twitter DM, there is a map now there, and we are oh, going... Oh, okay. Hold on. Cool. Oh, cool. Fancy. Yes. All right. Um, uh, maps, oh, that's the wrong one. Maps. <laughs> um, so oh, what... The maps on. <laughs> Why do I know the name Fandolin? I don't know. You'll, you'll tell me in a moment. Or you mean in real life oh. or in the game? Just in general. Is that like a thing? Is this... I don't... I Again, I don't know Jack about any of this, but Fandolin sounds very familiar. Could be. I was going to say know. Forgotten Mountains. But yeah, like I've seen this in a book somewhere. Yeah, so, what this, is, what, so what is this map a map of? What, what are we looking at here? You are looking at the town of Fandolin. And I am running... The Dragon of Ice Spire out of D&D Beyond, because it is a lovely pre-written adventure for beginning players. And, you know, something to kind of ease you into playing D&D. Okay. And it is pre-written. I did not touch any of this. So, um, I'm just making sure I have all of my notes up as a DM. So if you get to the point where you want to run adventures... This is going to be a lot. So the actual adventure is called The Dragon of Ice Fire Peak. And I am running it uh, right out of D&D um, &D Beyond. So I've got 20 windows open. By the way, I just want to point out, nobody asked me about my backstory. We did ask you about your backstory. So tell us your backstory if you'd like us to know. Gary, let her rip. Yeah. If, you don't, you, you don't, you don't, if you don't care, you don't care. I don't want to. No, I care. I don't care. Wow. Look, okay. the it rest really of us care. Like the rest of us care. <laughs> and as a DM, I really care, so I know what to do to your character. So, I'm um, okay, so here's my, here's my backstory. So, uh, I'm a paladin, but uh, I am a fallen paladin because I used to be super devout, super zealous, like super religious. I was like really hardcore into the church and big time believer in, you know, what, whatever aquatic half-elf god I, I uh, worship and devoted my life to the church. And then uh, bandits came through my village one day and completely wiped out my entire uh, family, including a newborn baby, um, which they stuck on a spike. And it was horrible. And uh, it was so distressing to me and upset me so much that I basically uh, renounced God uh, and said like, what, you know, what, what, how, how can God be real if he would allow something like this? So I, I devoted my life to God um, and, and this is how I am repaid. Fuck you, God, basically. Um, and uh, I've now turned my back on the church and the light, and I've devoted myself to uh, a life of nihilism, uh, which is why I'm a cell sword, why I'm a, why I'm a mercenary, why I am a, uh, like, I'm just out for myself. Like I used to, again, I used to all be about like charitable works and Christianity and all that kind of stuff. And now I'm just like, whatever, fuck you, I'm just gonna get mine. So I'm like very much a fallen paladin, very, uh, very dark in my mindset. But deep within me, there still is like the germ of, of hope and redemption. And like, I won't admit it to myself, but I, but I, I wanna believe again. And I wanna believe that there can still be good in the world. Uh, but for right now, I'm just, you know, I'm just very emo, very kind of wallowing in the, in the darkness. Um, and, you know, still kind of haunted by the very vivid visions of, uh, uh, my half elf baby on a spike being dangled in my face by horrible monsters that raided my village. And, um, you know, yeah, pretty, pretty fucked up in the head basically, but there's hope for me yet. That's, that's Merengue. Well, as you can see, my character is like, well, that escalated quickly. Um, as a DM, I'm just like, well, <laughs> that went places. Uh, 
Now I sit here and ponder. I mean, was is that is that not good? Is that not appropriate? No, it's so excellent. It's no, it's continue. excellent. I okay. mean, my paladin's okay. backstory is that her wife was murdered in front of her. Um, yeah, see? And she's been spending six and a half seasons to find this dude. And just now found him last episode. Oh, wow. Ooh. And he was like, oh, it was just a Tuesday to me. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Our DM is in my chat. Um, I've spent a good portion <laughs> of our six and a half seasons, or six seasons and four episodes into season seven looking for this dude. And he's like, I don't remember killing her. It was a Tuesday. And I'm like, oh boy. Okay then. Well, I guess that's what we're doing. <laughs> that's a nice, that's, I mean, it's kind of legit. That's kind of legit. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this is really interesting. This is really interesting to me, Tanya. Yes. Uh, whenever I've seen like my 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 main experience of Dungeons and Dragons is really just kind of seeing it like fictionalized, like in TV shows and stuff. When like I, you know, I used to watch like Freaks and Geeks, they would play Dungeons and Dragons. But like, but when you saw them doing that, you would always come into the scene like you know in media res, like in the middle of a campaign or whatever. So I'm actually kind of interested to see for the first time what a D and D campaign looks like at the very beginning. Like what like what's the what's the start of the story? Yes. So while I'm while I'm wow. setting the scene, um, someone um, well, you all should think about kind of how the order of the sunfish came to be in this town. Um, so this is not going to be as polished as it would be if I if I knew the adventure super well or if I'd written it myself. But we're gonna go for it and see what happens. Um, all right. The adventure begins. What is that noise? I'm hearing a weird noise. It sounds like a clock. Nothing here. A I clock? Hear, yeah, I hear something that's like brushy or ticky or... Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Oh, and it stopped, I think. Oh, well. We'll figure it out. Um, all right. Let me... Let me welcome you to Fandolin. I'm glad that they give you uh, bits to read because some days when you are low on brain power, it doesn't always work out. Uh, so welcome to Fandolin, Order of the Sunfish. Uh, the frontier town of Fandolin is built on the ruins of a much older settlement. Hundreds of years ago, the old Fandolin was a thriving human town whose people were firmly allied with neighboring dwarves and gnomes. But then an orc horde swept through the area and laid waste to the settlement, and Fandolin was abandoned for centuries. In the last three or four years, settlers from the cities of Neverwinter and Waterdeep have begun the hard work of reclaiming the ruins of Fandolin. The new settlement is now home to farmers, woodcutters, fur traders, and prospectors drawn by stories of gold and platinum in the foothills of the Sword Mountains. However, the arrival of a white dragon threatens to destroy all that they've worked to rebuild. You uh, see the map. I'm going to put this also in the chat so they can see it. Um, did my extension disappear? Because I'm, I'm looking at my Twitch channel again, and I don't see it. Where did it go? Um, if you didn't, is there a way to get it back? Here. Um, I still see it on mine. Oh, you do? Why do I yeah. not see it when I look at my own channel? Um, if you're looking yeah, in squad view. Oh, oh, let me, uh, let me I, still see squad it. Thing. I still see it. Okay. Um, so hmm. it, it seems like it, it's a mixed bag. Some people are seeing it. Some people are not seeing it. And that's sometimes just Twitch. Like... Yeah. Should we yeah, should we not do the squad stream? I wonder if that would like turn the squad stream off. I wonder if that make make it simpler for people. No, it should be fine. Um, it's more that looking at your own stream, you'll see it. But if you looked at the squad, then you're not. Let me not look at my creator dash. Let me look at my dashboard again. Hold on, real quick. Um, no problem. Okay, so yeah, extensions. Refresh, refresh Gary's chat, and it's gone. My extensions. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, you know what? It somehow tur it, it turned itself off. Now it's back on. I don't know what happened. Uh, it should be back up now. Yep, there it is. Yeah, except um, your character's Oops. not showing, so Twitch. let me refresh. Okay, now I see it. Yeah, let me refresh, because your character was not showing on the D&D &D Beyond overlay for some reason. When I went, when I, yeah, it's weird. When I went to my extension, oh yeah, and mine isn't showing either. We only see three people in the party, not four. Hey, kind of funny games. Thanks for the thanks for the raid of 198. 
Oh, wow. Oh, wow. that kind of funny. Big time raid. Getting some love from the kind of funny best friends. Welcome to the campaign, our dudes. We're here with, um, this is the first ever episode of uh, Dungeon Crossing. Dungeons and Dragons inside the world of Animal Crossing. The uh, wonderful and talented uh, Tanya, a.k.a. Cypher of Tear, who is a very experienced uh, dungeon master and D&D player, is teaching uh, some of us noobs how to play uh, D&D. Some of us for the first time. Myself for the first time. Uh, Shannon Woodward sitting next to me here for the first time. Um, Adam right Nicholson here. over there in the poopy hat for the first time. And Brian, you have played before, but you're kind of refreshing yourself, right? Yes. Okay. So, yeah, why am I not added to the party? Did I did I fail to do something, Tanya, uh, in adding to the party? Hold on. We didn't want to have to tell you this way. We didn't want you to find <laughs> out like this. Is so. that, that, wow. back, that back story was so bleak, you've already kicked me out. <laughs> wow, I have not. Let me make sure that your character is in the... Is in the party. I've, um, nope, you're I'm there. I'm looking at it. He's all, he's all, he's all created. I just don't know why it wouldn't be showing up in the extension. Um, you're active. You're active. Everyone's active in there, so you should be showing up. Um, I don't know if Ob oh, Lauren, you're still here. Is do you know why Gary's character may not be showing up in the overlay? Um. Because only three characters are showing up. Yeah, oh, I'm no. wondering if I if there's like some box or something I didn't check to like join the party. No, you're what there. Is, I see you uh, in the campaign. Your uh, stealth attribute at. Oh, oh your wow. stealth is too high. Oh, this um, <laughs> Lauren said it might have to refresh. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna deactivate the overlay and reactivate it. I just did that. I'm gonna I, okay deactivate. Set as overlay, activate set as overlay one. It's back on. Yeah, got I just you. came back with three characters. I got you. Hold on. Um, I had to go into Dungeon Crossing, and now you should be there if you refresh. Okay. I'm I had to go. Me. I had to go into the actual overlay um, app, and it should. Still seeing three. Let me uh, let me deactivate and reactivate. Again. Hold on. You are there now when I see you. It was me. I had Let to go in and again, fix man. you. So you need to go into your overlay, into the extension, and choose your yeah. character, and then save. Oh, and that's what do... it was. Okay, hold on. Uh, how do I do that? How do I go into the overlay? So you go into your extensions. Yep, yeah, my extensions. Um, click on the gear on D&D yep. Beyond. Oh, I see it. Okay. Um, click okay. on campaign selection. Uh, yep. Yeah. Oh, wait, hold on. That's not it. Wait a second. I've got, it says extension configuration, which I cannot click on. And then there's ca oh, yeah, campaign selection. Here we go. Correct. Okay. Dungeon now, crossing. Dungeon All crossing. Right. Now make sure you've clicked your character and then save. Aha. Okay. Yeah. So that's what you need to do to add into the party. Yes, I so that should have worked. because your character oh, okay. had no info there at all, is. it didn't there he is. up. Okay, now 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 we're ready for business. Nice. Yeah, so basically if you if you do that and your character is not complete, they will not show up. And if you don't go into the overlay and choose them, they will not show up apparently. So Gosh, we all man. learned all right, today. We got it we got it working. Yay, yeah, we all learned something. We only all gotta right. do this one time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so n now that we are back to getting our our adventuring going, um, and feel free to emote or do stuff at the table so we're not a bunch of sprites just staring at each other. Um, as I read, if you want to react, feel free. Um, so. What do I have on my wheel right now? Hold on. Um, so. Oh, dear. Someone is shocked. This, this, this is the face. This is the face that I had after my family was murdered in front of me. Yes, yes, that was the look you had on your face, and then it was rage. Um, yeah. So it was nonstop rage ever since. Yes, yeah, so you you are shocked face all the time. Oh no, you sneezed. Um, so, to start our adventure, the Order of the Sunfish, what you find, nestled in the rocky foothills of the snow-capped Sword Mountains, is the mining town of Fandolin. 
It consists of 40 or 50 simple log buildings. Crumbling stone ruins surround the newer houses and shops, showing how this must have been a much larger town in centuries past. Fandolin's residents are quiet, hard-working hard -working folk who came from distant cities to eke out a life among, among, among the harsh wilderness. They're farmers, stonecutters, blacksmiths, traders, prospectors, and even small children. The town has no walls and no garrison, but most adults keep weapons within easy reach in case the need for arms should arise. Visitors are welcome, particularly if they have coin or to spend or news to share. The Stonehill Inn at the center of town offers modest lodging and meals. A couple doors down from the inn, posted outside the town master's hall, is a job board. And that is where the Order of the Sunfish finds themselves at the beginning of this adventure. So, um, as you approach this job board, describe your character and what has brought you to Fandolin Order of the Sunfish. So we are here as a group. We're already kind of allied together as a, as a group. Yes, because it's always easier to have okay. everyone already know each other. And, you know, you have wherever you all were, you have agreed to meet at this town because your various adventures are going to bring you past this town anyway. So why not meet up again and do some work and then, you know, spread out again once this job is done and meet up again in the future and, and hang out? Okay. So do we all have to agree on what our collective origin story that's brought us here is? Uh, you could, or it could be you all have various origin stories and, you know, you adventured together previously, you worked well together, and you've kept in touch. And when a job comes up that needs more than one person, hey, everyone said that there's a dragon in Fandolin. I can't take on a dragon by myself. Let's get the Order of the Sunfish together and take on this dragon. Okay. Sounds like a pretty good idea to me. You know, remember when I wanted to talk to dragons? We could have just talked them out of this. Well, you, you haven't met the dragon yet. <laughs> good point. Yeah. Mm. He might well, be a jerk. So far as my character is concerned, like, I'm, I'm allied with this group, but, like, not for any particular reason of, like, friendship or loyalty. Like, you know, these uh, other people are just, um, you know commodities to be exploited for my own cynical ends you know I'll, I'll team up with you guys if it helps me you know get what i personally want but like as soon as that equation is no longer beneficial for me i'll just fucking kill you or walk away or whatever like you know oh. I, I, i'm here i'm here until i'm not basically you're a okay. people person okay yeah. Wait, are you saying I, this out loud to us have, have you heard have you heard my backstory Brian? I, it ain't I, good. I, mm -mm, no no Wow. So I'm, basically, Honestly, I'm just basically here looking looking to make some quick cash, however, is, however, by whatever means necessary. No job is too small. No job is too low. I'll, I'll do anything. Like, just give me, like, okay. a, it's just money. Are you saying this to us as a group? Right, are you saying this out loud, or is this I'm what you're to saying that. to me as the DM? <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> Since we have done stuff I together, am, how I'm, much I of mean, this personality I'm, are we... How much of this part of your personality are we aware of versus versus internal? Oh, so I, I mean, I, 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 so yeah, you. I think, I think, I think you, I think you get. I think you know, like I wear a lot of this cynicism very much on my sleeve. So it's not like I've tricked you. Says that. It's not like I've tricked you into thinking that I, um, I'm, I'm like, oh, like, like, I'm Mister, like you know. Kumbaya, let's all get along and go save the world. Like you, you know, talk a lot. You talk a lot in your sleep, and we just yeah. I mean, like okay. I've got that fucking thousand yard stare. Like there's no faking, you know, me being a happy dude. Like it ain't gonna happen. Like you can tell there's something like right, seriously wrong with me. But nor, but nor do you think that. Nor do you know just like like how bad it is. Like that I would happily kill you all in your sleep. You know, if it was if it got me even one inch further to where I want to be on any particular day. And but for you, me, so you. That's one of the things I like best about you. You know, uh, your character is, uh, we always know what you want. I feel safest around that. It's got to right. be black and white. It's good to do jobs yeah. with. Don't what you see is what you get with me. Like, I'm not, you know, you, I, I am what I am. And I'm not, I, you know, I'm not dishonest about it. Um, oh, a quick question from the chat, Tanya. It looks yes. like Gary's character is level two. Is that, yeah? Uh, no, okay. you should be level one. Is that one. bad? No, it's not bad, mm -hmm. but you should be level one. Everyone should be level one. Um... Why, how did that happen? 
Um, did you I, may, maybe, 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 right. the, maybe the maybe the system recognised that my backstory was so awesome. <laughs> leveled me up immediately. You, you leveled up immediately because yeah, of the like, awesome dude, back. I mean, that is so cool. Like have another I, have, have another level right off the I bat. I do like points for narrative. Um, no, I, I I agree with you. My character my character doesn't make friends, but but you people are probably the closest thing to that, and you're reliable. And none of you so far have tried to stab me in the back. So, so you far, know so far that I know of. Yeah. I'm on a oh, bit I of a hiatus see. because the weed for my mother went dry. So I need to I need to do a job and pack up that coin before I. Wait, uh... what about your mother went dry? I missed that for a second. What? Well, part of my character backstory was that my 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 mother's been missing for 15 years, and I've been oh, right. the trying to track her your... down. Okay, sorry. It's gone. Yes. The leads have gone dry. Yeah, right, okay, not got my it, mother got hasn't it. shriveled. No, uh, yeah. I, it's just or maybe she it's, has. We don't know. It's just because Tanya stepped in right I, I as honestly, you said we're that. just gonna have to do the whole puts on shades. Looks like this is one. Cold okay. Kid. So, 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 like, so Shannon, are I you mean... are you in, are you in search of like a new lead so you can like pick up the trail again? Is that the idea? Yeah, but in the, okay. that's that's exactly right. The last one went dead, and I ran out of money. And usually, I'm doing smuggling and whatnot as the right. smuggler does. But right. you know, this is doing doing a job with the. Uh, the people that don't get too close and they don't get in the way. Easy to leave. Right. Got it. Well, well, I'm just here a, because this, someone said really, really saying you guys were uh, going to do this. And, what a, what a know, group. I'm, I'm just here for the thrill. I'm okay. just moved by all these backstories. <laughs> the, the, the psychological <laughs> makeup of this group is fucking terrible. Wow. 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 <laughs> Why, wait, why I don't know how we're going to get even through an hour of playing this without all killing each other. Why are we going for this dragon and not for to figure out who killed Shannon's mom or whatever? Well, we well again, if, not, you're not your ha- if Shannon well, wants to pay me, I'll happily help her out. But right, we're not necessarily out, but... helping each other on our personal vendettas. We, we're we just people who work well together. I see. Right. Well, Little work, high group? Yeah. You work well enough together... <laughs> to get the job done and earn some gold, but there's not a lot of love lost. Put it that way. Um, Bet. I mean, is that fair? Oh, yeah. I feel mm-hmm. like it is. Yeah. And we still don't know Smoops. Mysterious backstory. <laughs> My mysterious backstory? Mm-hmm. Yes, I, uh, I would appreciate it if you guys would stop talking about my mysterious backstory. The mysterious backstory that you constantly bring up that you won't talk about? Just because it's a mysterious backstory that I constantly mess it or talk about doesn't mean I want you to talk about it. Oh, okay, because it just sounds really mysterious, is all. It's very mysterious. <laughs> I, gar- I guarantee you it's not as interesting as he wants you to think it is. <laughs> oh my god. That's right. what he's doing. He's, 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 by, by saying, oh, it's too mysterious for you, he's making it, oh, but it must be really good then. But I guarantee you it ain't. If it was really good, he would have told you. Um, so, so job board, why are we here? Yeah, so, so you all are gathering in front of the town master's hall to find, find out about this dragon that someone would like you to uh, look into. So as you approach the Town Master Hall, it is a building that has sturdy stone walls. Uh, it's got a regular wood roof and a bell tower at the back. There's a job board. So if you've ever played um, Dragon Age Origins, the enchant- the Chanter's board that's in front of all the chantries in the towns mm-hmm. you go to, it's kind of like that. Um, and they're all written in common. It's got a bunch of job notices. So, um, are you going to inspect the board? Are you going to... What would you like to do now that you are in the lovely town of Fandolin? I investigate the job board. We need to make some money. All right. Yeah, I'm all about the money. We're going to make some money. We'll have to pick something that we can handle. I want to find a job that uh, has the most coin. Yeah, that sounds good. I mean, do they want us to kill this dragon? Like, what's going on with the dragon exactly? Right. Has the dragon been, like, terrorizing the town or something? Um, it has. The dragon has been terrorizing the town. But people don't quite know where the dragon's nest is. All they know is, suddenly, 
there's a white dragon that has been showing up. It hasn't done a lot, but seeing a dragon is pretty terrifying to the average person that just wants to farm their crops. They want to, you know, raise some cows and chickens and go about their life, maybe have a kid, maybe not. They just wanted to rebuild this town and that was all they wanted to do and suddenly a dragon appears. But for right now, all you know is this dragon has been spotted. What okay. you find... It hasn't actually killed anyone or anything yet. Not yet. Keyword okay. being So if I yet. investigate the board to see if there's anything about the dragon? All right, so there are quests on there. Um, one, all of you give me an investigation and I'm going to roll a d6 to decide what quest you, you first discover on the board. All right, so I know what I'm rolling. Everyone give me an investigation check. What is so that? What do I, how do I do that? Um, uh, beside your investigation on your uh, character oh. sheet. So, so number, roll a d20. Oh, uh, okay. So you roll a d20. Oh, and then... I got to get a... Wait, does, it, does, does this have a thing on it where I can it roll? Does. Or is that... Yeah, Gary, is, see where... Are you on your character sheet, Gary? Yeah. Uh, let me pull, uh, I'm see sure where pull up right now. your investigation is. Yeah. In your uh, skills. If you yeah. put the number there, it should roll the appropriate die. Oh yeah, look at that. Brilliant. Yes. Hold on, I'm I'm trying yeah. to get I got a I got a six. Okay. Oh, and plus a five, because I have plus five investigate intimidation. Investigation. So uh, you have a total uh, of Oh no, I rolled sorry, I rolled intimidation. Sorry. I'm an idiot. Hold on. <laughs> investigation. <laughs> investigation. Oh my god. I got a fourteen. We go into my, is it my dice? Is that where we go? That's where you change what the dice is like. No, if you look like. at your, um... Okay. If For you look at your character for... sheet, Shannon... Okay. Where it has okay. all your different skills, like acrobatics, animal handling, arcana, athletics, whatever... Yep. Just click, just click the number and it'll roll, it'll roll a, a die for you. Oh, okay. Where's investigation? Mm. Oh, about halfway down. Got it. So you click on the number and it rolls for you. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, on, on the I have a ten there, and it actually just is bringing up a it says senses. Uh, yeah. Um. Uh, I sorry. Oh, yes, I know. Um, so I, you want to do the the second? Um. So Sh Shannon, you want to do the second yeah. column from the left? Um. That lists all the that lists like all the skills, and then the number that's in the bonus column to the right of the investigation skill. If you click on that. Okay, hold on. I I feel like I'm on the wrong page. I'm clicking on my character. It. No, it's, I'm sorry. This is a bit cumbersome no on my phone for some reason. Okay. Skills. Oh, so I Cypher, is there, a way that I, is there a way that I can fix that paladin problem? I, I fixed fix it. It looks, like, it looks like... I uh, did it. Oh. What did you get? <clears throat> 16. Yes, yeah, so you... 13. The 16, 13. Adam, what did you get? Oh, geez. Um, and Gary, 22. what did you get? 14. Okay. So um, just for the chat really quick, yes, um, I did fix Gary's sheet. He is... He picked paladin twice, so that's why it looked like he was level <laughs> 2. So it is fixed. Oh, paladin. So it is fixed. It's fine. <laughs> um, That's like extra treasure. Yeah, I thought there was something odd about that when it showed up twice. Yeah, so basically somewhere Shannon, in there... Shannon, are you good with the... You think... Yeah. You figured out the die roll? You got that I did, for yeah. You? I got okay. a 16, yeah. Okay. I found it. I had to swipe right because I'm on my phone. Oh, okay. Just because yeah. the way my setup is, it's easier to use it this way. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so Smoop got the highest uh, investigate score. And what you found Smoop first Smoop. is... Um, That's my new thing. Oh my god. Please it's, don't. Lord. I told you I hate this guy already. Wow. So, this guy I might kill just for fun. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Um, you're level one, so I'm not going to send you after the dragon yet. So we're going to get a little adventure under our belt first. 
And what I'm going to send you on, because uh, I rolled a d6 to decide what quest you would do today, uh, you're going to go on the Mountain Toe quest. What you see mm. is a uh, notice about the Mountain Toe's gold mine that lies about 15 miles northeast of Fandolin. There's a new overseer, Don John Raskin, who just made the trip from Neverwinter to Fandolin and needs to be escorted to the mine. There's no telling what danger lies between Fandolin and the mine. It's only 15 miles, right? Once you deliver him safe and sound, return to Townmaster Harbin Wester and collect 100 gold. I like the 100 oh, gold. Like that. that sounds great. So did, sorry, did, did this guy explain to us why he needs to get to the mine? What, what, what does he need? What does he need? Why does he need to get there? He's the new overseer of Do the mine. Do we care? I mean, fair. Okay. I... I heard a hundred gold. I heard <laughs> escort someone to some spot, and all we gotta do is walk through the woods. No, you're right. I'm actually that—that that was actually a bit of a um, out of character for me because I don't give a shit why this guy needs to get to the mine. I just want the money. <laughs> Focus I mean, on the character. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, if so, if you ever want to ask something, just always say, "Hey, out of character, blah blah blah." Oh. Because okay, if you okay. don't, the players and the DM are gonna think that you're asking in character. So, oh, so God, you know, God. yeah, so whenever anyone wants to ask a question, especially since everyone is new, if you want to go, hey, got a question about why are we doing this? Because sometimes the character's motivation can be important. So depending on your story and what your character's up to, you know, you as a fallen paladin may very much care about a gold mine because that could maybe, I don't know, fund some things that you want to do to get revenge. Because maybe you're obsessed yeah. with getting revenge on the god that failed you, and you might really care about why he has to get to this gold mine. You never know. Someone in uh, someone in your chat, Tanya, asked. I think well, it's a very relevant question. Is this a hundred gold each or total? Total. So, and and how, and how exactly will we be splitting that up? Um, Seventy well, to me. No, it would be uh, oh. twenty-five gold we each. Have... But what if Smoop doesn't do anything? Why does he get 25? And I do all the work. We have already gone over this several times. <laughs> if we don't split it up evenly, all we do is stand in the middle of the town square arguing, and then night comes and somebody else does the quest for us. Do y'all want to get this gold or not? If we don't get it's moving, we're not going to make it before sundown. I'm, I, I just think, you know, we're, you know let, let's, let's get this out, you know, do this ahead of time so we, there isn't any uh, awkwardness later. It's already decided. Why do you have to make everything so difficult, Marengi? So we're splitting it. We're splitting it evenly, no matter regardless of who who does the most or the least work. Well, you can agree to split it evenly <laughs> and then see what happens. And you know, I don't trust yeah. Gary that your character may not just stab everyone in their sleep and try to take I the gold know. anyway. It, it, it sounds more like comrades of the sunfish to me. Wow. We we said order because it, order looks better on the letterhead. <laughs> oh man! All right, all right, whatever. Guys, fine. I think we should we should we should uh, definitely hit this guy up and take him on over down the miner's trail on the way to the mine. Where is he? Well, I don't know. He just left this notice on the board, so now we have to find him. <laughs> oh my god! All right, so. so... First, you need to go to the inn to find this gentleman. And um, after you've gotten, you, you've pulled this parchment off the job board, and now you need to go to the Stonehill Inn because obviously he's staying there until someone comes to escort him. He's not just, it's not a video game. He's not just loitering in one spot, no matter rain or shine. Um, the I was looking for the exclamation point over his head. <laughs> I, he doesn't have an ex He'll have an exclamation point once you get to the inn. <laughs> so right, well, let's head over there, guys. All right. So shall uh, we? Yes. <laughs> so I'm going to say, for the sake How of how far are we from the inn? Uh, like a five to ten minute walk. This isn't a very big town. Poor Shannon can't get back into her it chair. There we go. Okay. The, the controller drift is very real for me. we got to get you some new Joy-Cons. I know. We need someone at Nintendo to sponsor us. 
Uh, help seriously. left Joy-Con is sick. Oh, by the way, we should totally come up with a dungeon crossing logo. I think I think that's going to have to be the next the next step here. <laughs> All right. Let's have to figure out when that we can do me. this. Um, when this works mm -hmm. out with people's schedules so we can have shenaniganry. Um, all right, so you walk through the town, and, you know, it's it's small. It's not like you're visiting a major city like Faerun or Waterdeep. Within a, like, couple minutes, you see the Stonehill Inn, which is just a two-story roadhouse. It's only got six rooms on the upper floor for rent. Um, it's re relatively cheap. If you were to stay in an adventure out in the morning, it's only five silver. Um, a meal is only one silver. And you enter... Assuming you can not argue about who's going to pay for the inn. And you find a human barkeep um, wiping down the, the counter, keeping an eye on the few patrons there are. And he, he looks up when your group walks in. So are you all um, are you all going in and chatting with him? Are you looking for this person you're supposed to escort? What are you all doing? I want a drink. I want to get wasted so I can forget my past. We're going on a quest. Yeah, but I fight better when I'm drunk. No, I'm looking for our target. We better. don't have time. You say that every single time, <laughs> and it never works out. <laughs> it does, though. If Look, you get drunk and you hold us back for more than 10 minutes on this entire walk, you're not getting your share. We're splitting. I'm, funny, I'm funnier when I'm drunk. I'm more charming when I'm drunk. And I fight more charming than this. Drunk. In that case, I'm a drunken master. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, hold, hold uh, that well, thought. I'm, I'm going to go with Barbara and find the guy. Okay, so pause. Mm -hmm. I mean, all four of us don't oh, need to talk okay. to this guy, right? Why, right. I, why, why can't I have a drink at the bar? You can talk to him. Okay, you can have a drink at the bar, but I want to pause here and point out something. Um, this would be another example of if your character is going to be kind of an abrasive personality and you know do things like this this would be another good thing to bring up in session zero because you never oh. know and you know and i'm not saying don't do it we're having fun this is just a pre-written adventure so you can get a taste of playing but if yeah. we were if we were setting up like let's say we decide okay dungeon crossing is going to be a thing and we're going to either come up with an adventure or something in that session zero if you go i want my character to my character does have a drinking problem my character does have an anger problem that is something to bring up and go, this is how I intend to play my character. If this will get to anyone, or if this will be a problem for anyone in how I portray this character, there there's a safety mechanism called the X card. And since we're playing digitally and we're literally doing this live on Twitch, what you could do is, you know, like if we were in a Zoom call and we had a nice overlay and we weren't doing Animal Crossing in that chat, you could do, you could type a capital X and that would tell me as a DM, okay, scale it back. This is not okay. Because, you know, what if, oh, someone, okay. what if someone IRL, you know, it does struggle with alcoholism and your character oh, doing that would be an issue. And, you okay. know, you're doing this. I'm, I'm over the top of this character. This is, his, this is his story and how it manifests. But, again, the objective is always to have fun. And so, right. with, and so like, let's say next year we go to Gen Con and you sit at a table with people you don't know. And there's no chance right. to have a session zero. There's no chance to get to know people. And you do something like that and you maybe don't know this person to the right of you has been struggling with alcoholism for years and that very, and it right. upsets them. So right. in, a, in a convention situation, it's harder, but in a planned game where you sit down, you plan out your characters, that would be a, here are the faults I, I want my character to have or, you know, okay. they've got an anger issue and I'm, I'm going to scream and yell when I don't get my way. For right. someone that has a history of abuse, that could be a trigger. So things like that are something to think about. Um, and again, we're just doing this to have fun, but that's just something where if we had a sit down, like spent four hours just on character creation and walking you through every little thing step by step, but you also never know what will do something to someone. So let's right. say any of us had a real issue, they'd be like, okay, hold up, stop, not okay, or just type a capital X right. in either the Twitch chat or our Discord or whatever okay. DM. 
So yeah, I just wanted to point that out while you, since you did that with your character. No, that's that's really really good to know, and it's all part of learning how to play this game. I'm kind of feeling out my character as I go. Like I didn't know that that was going to be an aspect of my character until like right as it happened. Like you know, you kind of improvise as you go along. But the sensitivity issues that you raise are totally valid, and I agree that we should all consider those. It's funny, never. I, I am I am a recovering alcoholic. It never even occurred to me, but it, it totally should have. So I'm I'm glad that you uh, brought that up. Right, and so for you, playing this character, it could be very cathartic, but if you're sitting at a table with someone else that doesn't know that about you, and they do it, it may trigger something in you, and you wouldn't know until it happens. Right, right. So yeah, so proceed. Um, so, uh, well, I'm gonna, I am gonna have a drink at the bar, but just one. Okay. And uh, I'll do that, while, and maybe uh, smoop or whatever. No, not smoop. Um, Maybe, maybe, uh, sorry, Brian, what's your character's name again? Archon. Maybe Archon can go uh, talk to uh, the uh, quest giver here. Has anyone, like, I'm sorry, are, is it crowded? Has anyone really taken notice of us, or are we just four more random people walking into the bar? Uh, the barkeep Tavern has noticed and... you because yeah, very much it's, they're not from around here. You're a little too well put together for this very small, not bustling town. Oh wow! Thank you very much. Ooh, hmm. Yes, <laughs> you know you are you are well appointed um, adventurers. Then, so then I would probably I'd I'd probably kind of after taking a view of the room, um, lock eyes with Barbara and just kind of indicate the bar like let's let's go talk. Sorry, indicate the bartender like that's who we need to talk to. Gotcha. All right, and Smoop, what are you doing? Well, I was going to join them as I am a bit of a folk hero in these parts. Uh, figured, combined so with my it. charisma and uh, my legend, that uh, anyone would be willing to talk to me. All yeah, right. Just so you know, this is what he's going to be like the whole game. So the four of us are approaching the bar. Um, yes. Merengue's ordering a drink barbara and Arcon are, are focused on talking to the bartender and smoop is being smoop <laughs> yes uh do we know the name of the man we're looking for what you know? i'm sorry what, what is shannon doing do we know that yet Arcon and i are going to talk to the bartender to find our right target Got yes it. your target is named don john raskin that is who we're looking for, but you don't yet know the bartenders. Look, I didn't write it. I didn't write it. There. I didn't you used to run a big cat farm? <laughs> Sorry, that was Carol Baskin. Oh, God. <laughs> so, I, so I'm having a drink. Smoop okay. is basically just, you know, going around talking to people. Because, yes. you, know, you know, you want, you, you, know you, you want to know how much you love that when you're at a bar and some stranger just comes up and starts talking to you. It's my favorite. Indeed. Love it. The best. Can't get enough of it. Um, and and Shannon and Brian are um, so. It, it, is it more appropriate for me to, to to refer to them as their character names, or their uh, IRL yes. names? Um, it would be better to um, it would be better to refer to them in their character names, just so you can make a okay. habit I just of got, it. I just got to. Yeah, no, I just got to, and that'll happen. I just you know at the outset, I got to kind of make it stick. Like Shannon is Barbara, and you know, just kind of connect those names up. So Barbara. And Archon are going to talk to the bartender to try and figure out where the, where the, where the, uh, the quest giver is, the John Raskin guy. Uh, correct. Yeah. Okay. Outside of character, do they serve food at this uh, tavern? They do because there are rooms to rent, and you would expect to at least have breakfast and dinner, if not lunch, because the assumption is you're out doing business or you're working, and you would have packed a lunch to take with you in the field. But at the very least, there is breakfast and dinner served at this inn. Are we going to be uh, staying we... overnight at this tavern, or are we just in and out to get this quest? Um, it depends. What time of day did you arrive at town? Uh, uh, I have no idea. Do, we, uh, do we get to decide that? I mean, you could, or I could make a suggestion. Because I'd, I'd rather... Like I'd like the suggestion. Yeah. Yes. Um, this was well, like you, this was like a DM's department. <laughs> okay, well, I just want to be sure because I want to give I want to give you all as much leeway as possible, especially in your first time kind of feeling mm -hmm. your way around. 
Um, but let's say that you arrived mid-afternoon and by the time you went to the job board and came back, it's, it's only a couple hours till dinner and since it's about 15 miles to the, the um, mine you have to escort him to, it would, it would behoove you to stay overnight and leave at first light the next morning. Okay. And how many rooms will we be getting and how are they going to be, uh, like, are we getting, are we each getting our own room or am I, am I going to have to share with someone? Um, how much money do you all have? Just to, looking to, to find, start. Where, where do we find our money here? Um, if you do I need to look that up money. to see if I have some money? Um, it would be under equipment. I okay. Yeah, I didn't give myself money. Okay, so, you um, know, for the, monies. so for the sake of, of smooth playing, I'm going to say you all have 10 gold. Okay. Oh, yes. I, in fact, I do have 10 gold. Oh. I actually have 10 gold. Can yes. I uh, persuade Marangi to pay for our dinners? You could certainly try. I mean, you can try. I would like to try. I mean, why don't you? Why don't you pay for your own dinner? I don't have any money. Oh, you don't. Oh, how is it that I get started out with ten gold and and Smook didn't? I said I don't know, everyone but gets. All I know is I. We oh, you're have... okay. Oh. Okay, so but, like, but, okay. but the character sheets aren't reflecting that. Right, right we didn't or do money. Give them that in the character sheet? I can give you that later. Okay. Um, you know, I'm it's just wondering why I, I started with 10. It's probably based on the I'm background just you I'm just out of character. I want to see how this plays oh, out. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, um, is it okay get... if I still just uh, persuade Marangi to uh, pay for all of our dinners? Sure. Go ahead and try. <laughs> because then I don't have to spend my money. <laughs> what do I do to try? I... I use my persuasion uh yes um let me see so i just have to click that and roll it yes let me look at Marengi's character sheet to see okay so his persuasion is under charisma he has a very high charisma okay so go ahead and roll um a roll persuasion both of you okay oh god okay um hold Shit. on a second you like this. Uh, all right, here we go. Well, I got plus <laughs> five persuasion, so I got a nice little background. I got a like, nice little opportunity for me here. Here we go. Yeah. Um, oh, 21. Well. 21. Wow, and what did you get? Uh, Eat it. I rolled a one. Oh, so that is a failure. So I rolled a six. Yeah. No, no, so you'll be, but... So you'll be buying your own dinner. <laughs> but I think you have to buy mine now. <laughs> All right, so a one is a critical failure. One is a critical failure. Great. I'd say. So normally... Smoop's going to be Smoop. So this is going to be an opportunity to play this out because not only did you not convince Moringa to pay for everyone's dinner, you somehow... You pissed me off. You pissed him off and you also kind of get the displeasure of the other people in your party for trying to basically con him <laughs> so into cute. paying for food when <laughs> you have your own money. So tell us what your ultimate failure looks like. Oh, I'm, I'm, lo- I'm loving this part. This is great. Uh, what is, sorry, what do you mean my ultimate failure? So you, uh, one is a critical fail. So okay. I want you to kind of role play and, and tell us what your attempt at conning uh, merengue into buying everyone's dinner played out like. Oh, I see what you mean. Oh, you mean like he narratively has to do that? Yes. It's, it's okay. fun. Okay. Uh, well, I essentially, I just walked up to merengue and uh, he was half into his drink and, and uh, I may or may not have said, hey, Merang- <laughs> Merengue, uh, wait, what, 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 what race are we here? Uh... Uh, Merengue is a half- I'm a half elf. Half aquatic elf. Yeah, so I walked up and aquatic I was like- Aquatic half elf, yeah. Hey, Aquaman, you're the only one with money. Why don't you pay for our damn food? Yeah. <laughs> and that is why I failed. And what yeah. do you say and to that, that? Yeah, and that's, mm. yeah, that, 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 that's what it looks like when you roll a one on persuasion, for sure. 
All right, and how do you respond to that, uh, Moringa? I mean, you know, even like he he was in my bad books the second he even came up to me. Like, don't interrupt me when I'm having a drink. I just want to be left alone. Like, have I have I not made it abundantly clear to you with my moody demeanor and very emo, just general way of carrying myself that I just don't want I just don't want you, you know, talking to me more than is absolutely necessary, especially not when I'm eating or drinking. Just leave me alone. Um, and uh as soon as he walked up to me, it doesn't matter what he was, as soon as he opened his mouth, I don't care what's coming out of it. Like, I'm already annoyed. And, <laughs> and, and now, and, and, and you heard what he said to me. So like, you know, triple that basically in terms of pissing me off. Guys, we're um, not here to fight like this. All right. We're just here to talk to the guy. Like we don't have time for this. No, but Shannon, this is, this is the beginning of the character. No, I know. I'm, I'm like being in character. Movie. I'm being in oh, character. Sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. sorry. Sorry, I forgot. I, I, I forgot about that. Let's, I, I always want to do a voice or something so you know. <laughs> well, as she said, unless you otherwise You're right. Denote. You're right. I apologize. I'm no, still no. learning. Um, okay, so, all right. So, uh, 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 stop being, stop sticking your nose in, Barbara. Nobody asked you. And now I've got two people annoying me. <laughs> and you were the one who was worried about uh, who wasn't going to pull their weight. Hmm. What do you mean? I'm mm-hmm. pulling my weight. We haven't done anything yet. We're just sitting in the bar. I, I, I'm not, and I'm not the one who has a job. You have a job. You're supposed to go get the quest. So I, I, I'm. Why aren't you doing your job? When do we why get are the bartender's attention? Um, whenever oh, you, one okay. of you well, would you like to walk up mine. to the bar. So we're gonna leave Merengue, yeah. Merengue and Smoop to argue about this attempted at forcing everyone to buy dinner. Uh, Barb and Archon, are you approaching the bartender to actually talk to him? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. All right, so uh, what do you, tell me what that looks like and how do you approach said bartender? <laughs> um, well, I don't know. I, I I'd like to think that we, as as the two members of the party who who don't typically get into get into an immediate immediate verbal argument the moment that we enter every inn, have sort of developed this rapport. So, I am going to I, I'm going to like kind of let Barbara take the lead. So Archon is sort of like a step behind her. Okay. As we're both, but we're both very very, not assertively, but very like directly approaching the bartender to say, hey, you know, like, hey there. Seem to know what's going on. Uh, We're looking for a gentleman by the name of Raskin. Uh, and, he, and as you approach the bar, uh, the guy that's wiping the, the counter looks up at you. He's a, a friendly looking male human because, you know, he's a bartender. They're usually friendly. And he looks up at both of you. Oh, you're new around here. Who's it you're looking for again? Raskin. Oh yeah, yeah. He uh, he's a interesting fella. He uh, came interesting in, how? came in, acted like he owns the place. Was very, very into ordering me around and telling me that I had to carry his bags for him and and didn't even give me so much as a copper for a tip. And now he's holed up in his room doing whatever hoity-toity men like him do. Sounds lovely. What room number? Uh, four. He's in room number four. Please tell me you're going to take him away from here. We're going to take him away from here. Sounds like we've just made your day. You did, and you know what? When you come back down, I drinks are on me for the first round for you two. Are, are those two lovely blokes with you as well? And he, he points over at uh Well there we have um we have an association with those two, but they are they are definitely not with us. Wow. All right, okay. <laughs> okay then. I, I you know I can hear you. I'm right over here. <laughs> I'm like standing right we're next like to you. Like we're in the same bar. <laughs> Aren't I just simply assume that two of you were just do, doing your verbal sparring by you know, who knows how long that was gonna take. Still so. got ears. I mean, you all could role play this out if you'd like to. The bartender is uh, talking with Barbara because, you know, he's he has not met many dwarves in his day. 
And he's just chatting with her while you three go have your verbal sparring. And he's like, uh, tell me what you like to drink and I'll have it ready when you two come back downstairs. What are you going to drink, Barbara? Mead. Mead and... and... <laughs> And for you, sir. I don't yes. know why that made me laugh as much as you did. It was just so deadpan. Mead. It was, well, it was, it was, it was the delivery. Mead. It was the delivery. Mead. Uh, it, was, oh. it was so deadpan. Uh, <laughs> I would say whatever, whatever, whatever your good house, your house or village recommend of wine is, that'll work for me. All right, we've got a. Uh, we'll have um, a Chardonnay. <laughs> <laughs> so if Marangi is not buying us all dinner, can we just go get this damn guy and talk to him? And the bartender's exactly giving you needs? free drinks. You got what you wanted. You got your hand out. Why are you still going no, on about? She, it? Uh, oh no, no. The bar, the bartender, uh, the 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 lovely gent behind the bar, is only offering free drinks to Archon and Barbara. And not ah. to you two, because you two were just basically sitting there arguing in his bar. I already paid for my drink. I'm right. the only paying customer in this group. Fair. So he, he does look to you two. Oh, Lord. I, okay. Ar I mean, you know, Archon looks looks over at, at Marengi and Smoke, who may be giving him dagger eyes, and simply says, room four. Y'all ready? <laughs> I'm already on my way. Yeah, See. I follow. All right. Snoops and toe. Snoops and toe. Oh my god. All right. Um, I'll, I'll be at the I'll be at the bar when you get back. I'm not going anywhere. All right. Fair enough. All right. So the three of you traipse up to room four. Uh, who knocks? I knock. Snoop. Okay. <laughs> nope. Too late. Barbara already said that she knocked. Um, unless okay. you, unless Barbara's gonna knock and you're gonna reach over her head and, and we can see where that goes. Cause I'm sure that... I do that. Barbara, are you gonna, what are you gonna do about this blatant disrespect of your dwarven stature? Can I elbow him in the stomach? You sure could. A friendly oh, elbow, just hard enough to, ugh! I kind of feel like a, 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 the sorry the out of character because I just realized I've kind of written myself out of the next part of the story here. So I'm feeling like a bit of a mug right now. But, um, you know, with uh, with Barbara's uh, lower dwarven stature, stature, I'm guessing the elbow could probably uh, get uh, smooth a bit lower than that and could be a bit more interesting. I was thinking you tactical position. Are we going to roll to see where my elbow lands? <laughs> There's a tactical position of the elbowing of a fellow party member there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. if you yeah. want, or I mean, you could get him, just... Get him, get him right in. Get him uh, right in the smoops. Oh, I mean... Not, not the smoops. <laughs> so there's two ways that you could do this. Either you could kind of like just, just without looking, kind of nudge back like, hey, I, I, I don't forget I'm here. Or you could make it interesting and uh, roll a contested strength and see what happens when you elbow him, depending on how where your elbow would land on Smoop. Yeah, that's sorry, what I want to do. I, sorry, again, out of character. Can I, like, we're in the first, we're in the first 10 minutes of this campaign, mm -hmm. and already we've done the one thing that our expert DM said not to do, which is split the party. Look, and now the very first combat encounter is, the very first combat encounter is between members of the party. You know, Gary, you can that. catch up after you finish that beverage. And, and, and Gary, if, if, if all we exist as is an example to others, then let's just keep playing that out. Oh my God, this is a train wreck and I love it. I mean, you stay down there to drink your drink. Nobody, I'm not going to, I'm not going to basically hand. Yeah, I'm, I, yeah, yeah, I get it. I'm, I'm not the one who started a fight with throwing elbows. I'm drinking right. quietly, minding my own business. Well, Arch we're going to find out if it's a fight or if I just nudge him. Archon, Archon just kind of has a deep sigh, and he's like, you kill me with this? <laughs> All right, each of you roll. Uh, roll 100. Your... Oh, 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 okay. Um, so each of you roll, roll on what? strength. Roll your strength. Oh, dear. <laughs> Uh, I have zero strength, so let's see how that goes. Well, you don't have zero. You basically <laughs> have a ten. So what did you roll? I rolled, I rolled a three. I rolled a nine. 
Oh yeah, Smoop, you got. And it says plus one. Yeah, so Smoop, you got beamed in the Smoops. Ooh. You got the wind knocked out of you, my dude. Smoop's got nards. Oh. oh. Smoops. You Meanwhile, know. Arcana is, is just kind of sighing, rolling his eyes, and saying, "A hundred gold. A hundred gold." <laughs> <laughs> all right uh so was that someone simulating knocking or someone actually got someone at their door that was me simulating knocking. okay um oh wow that was good because i thought someone's door <laughs> i was like looking at my door what <laughs> well, he, so sorry i missed i missed everything did 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 barbara elbow smoops in the smoops and he went down like a sack of shit is that what happened <laughs> don't make me feel short mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so the door opens to this gentleman who is very haughty looking and he he just kind of sneers to see the three of you at his door, especially to look down and see this person curled up on the ground groaning and looking very <laughs> pitiful. And then he notices the dwarven lass and the, the tall, handsome tiefling. And he's like, what are you doing here? I already told them what time I'd like dinner served. Who are you? Your escorts. Oh, no, are you? your servants. Mm. Ooh, don't, I like that. Bit of shade. Don't, don't sing Hamilton. Don't sing Hamilton. I want to. I'm not going to do it. Oh, shit. Uh, Sorry. Oh, jeez. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> bad, bad. <laughs> no, it's fine. Just that's where my brain went. Um, because your obedient servant dot mm -hmm, yeah. um so don john raskin is <laughs> sorry this is what happened I'm sorry that name is killing me <laughs> and i didn't write it sorry, I'm so I, got sorry. It. I got it i got it i got deep it breath. I'm together I'm deep good. breath deep I'm breath good. um mm. so uh don john is basically full of himself he you know he feel if a good character comparison would be if you played Dragon Age 2, the very snobbish or lesion that owns the mine outside of Kirkwall, this would be Don John Raskin. And he just is looking, he looks down on everyone because he thinks that he's so much better and he's full of tales of grandeur that are really just bluster if you really think about it. Um, it's like, Oh, you're, you're taking me to the mine then. Well, it's, isn't it a bit late for now? What are you doing here now? Shouldn't we go in the morning? <laughs> oh, yeah. We're here to tell you we'll leave at first light. Oh, all right then. Um, is there, is this all of you that is escorting us? I mean, a man of my importance. We definitely need more than just three people to escort me. I mean... Look at me, bandits would trip all over themselves to to get my goods and my, my glory. Uh, and at this uh, point, I come sauntering up the stairs, flagon of uh, the strongest dwarven lager in the place in hand. Um, and I say, yeah, don't, don't worry about these jokers. I've, I've got your back. Like, yeah, I, I know these three don't look like much, but clearly I am the... Uh, the MVP of this outfit, and you're going to be fine, just as long as you've got the money. In fact, I insist on seeing the money up front. There. <laughs> you see, you don't have three to escort you. You have four. Careful what you wish for. Mm. And Don John looks over Marengi and takes a disdainful whiff. Are you sure you'll be in shape to escort anyone anywhere? It seems like you spent a good amount of time at the <laughs> bar already. Yeah, don't worry about that. I'll sleep it off. I'll be as fresh as a daisy in the morning. Don't you worry. Hmm. While laying on the floor, I say, Ooh, damn. <laughs> and, oh, damn. Uh, and Raskin just kind of looks it, looks down at you. He's like, I, I don't think you are in a position to say anything to anyone. Now, are you? I offer my hand to, uh, for, to Smoop to get him up. Smoop takes it. I Come can on. assure you, we are more than capable of escorting someone of your renown from here to a mine. Has anyone else come and offered to do it yet? 
no, because most people are afeard of some tale of a dragon. And, you know, this town isn't... It's, it's not much. It's still rebuilding. So a lot of people just pass by and, and think that there's nothing of value here. So I've actually been languishing here a few days more than I ought to. And I'm sure that the scallywags at the miner are taking as much time and leisure as they'd like to without me there to oversee things. I mean, look, people aren't wrong. I've only been in this town for half an hour. The beer is awful. Uh, the people are terrible, from what I can tell. Um, yeah, I can understand why people go right through. Frankly, I wouldn't piss on this town if it was on fire. So let's just get out of here first thing in the morning, get paid, and, and get on with it. I'm not here to make friends. You don't say. I couldn't have told um, that at all. I'd be... <laughs> I'm very curious if there's more to this uh, gentleman than we uh, are first seeing. Uh, can you like? Can I do something like a investigate or insight to try and learn more about this gentleman? Because he keeps just saying the exact same thing over and over. And can I use my perceptiveness the same in the same token? Yes, you both could absolutely either do a perception check or sense uh, motive. You could see if you can detect what his motives are. Um, and sense motive. Oh God, I have to look that up because I'm terrible at sense motive. But I believe that goes under your, oh God, what is it? Can someone in the chat help me with a sense motive if it's wisdom or charisma? I don't remember. Mm. But for now, um, if wisdom? you wanna, okay, wisdom. So yes, insight check. Yes, so do an insight and let me know what you've rolled. Okay. I'm sorry, out of character, what are we, what are we trying to determine here? Um, if there's more to this character than you think, if there's more to him than, uh, okay. than so he's the holding, bluster. holding something back maybe? Okay. Yeah. Cypher, it, 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 yes. it seems like he, the on the board, it was just, he's going to take over this mine or something, but it was like, I don't know. He keeps talking about his renown and whatnot, and so like, why would this renowned and well-off person be going to take over a mine? It seems kind of unusual, doesn't it? It does. Cipher, seem very do unusual. I add? Do I add I... the plus three to my roll? Yes. So when you click on insight on your character sheet, it will yeah. add your bonus by automatically. I got twenty. Okay, I rolled. I rolled a ten. And okay. then I have plus three in the column. Okay, so you have 13 total for for Barbara. Um, does anyone else rolling? I rolled a 23. Okay. Um, Marengi? It actually you... said D. Do I need to roll? Uh, you don't need to roll. You can if you like. Or you could not do anything and just kind of keep uh, observing the moment. Yeah, because I'm not, I'm not really, well, I don't know. I am suspicious by nature. I have no faith in human nature at all. So I am going to roll. What do, I, what do I need to roll here? Uh, insight. 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 Okay, here we go. I got plus one insight. Uh, five total. Yeah, nothing is coming to you for, for this dude. He's just, he's like every other jackass you've come across in your travels. He's full of himself. You don't care anything about him. Um, and then, uh, Archon, are you rolling? No, I'm waiting. Okay, so, uh, Smoop, you rolled very well. You get a sense that there is a layer of, of shine over him. Not literally, but he is, he's the guy that's going to try to sell you rain on a wet day. And sometimes he manages it. He mm -hmm. really thinks a lot of himself. He thinks he's far too important for this job. And he thinks everyone is far beneath him. And a lot of tales of his renown are greatly, greatly, greatly exaggerated. So he is basically a legend in his own mind that is going to go save this town and its mine. Because if not him, 
Who would save these poor, hapless peasants from themselves? Can I float an idea at this point? Uh, in character or out of character? In character. This is Marangi. Go for it. Go. What? Uh, let us know who you are addressing and what your idea is. Be aware mm -hmm. that this NPC is right there, so he's, he will hear your idea. I, I don't care if he's here or not. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to say to the, I'm just going to say to the party. Look, I don't like the look of this guy. He's clearly a slime bag. You can't, you know, like, like there's no guarantee that he's even going to pay up. I mean, I again, I think we should absolutely demand full payment in advance because there's no way this guy's not going to stiff us at the other end. And also, I just want to raise the idea, like, this guy clearly is rich. He's got a lot of money. He might be worth a lot of money to the mining company. I mean, we could just kill him and take whatever he's got, whatever money he's planning on paying us. We don't even have to leave the tavern. Or maybe kidnapping and see if the mining company will pay more than a hundred gold. I mean, I'm, I'm just looking to maximize our, uh, you know, time investment versus uh, possible cash outcome. Okay, so despite all your uh, criminal intentions there, uh, <laughs> We <laughs> maybe one thing you said is very interesting that uh, he he definitely is exaggerating how how great he is. I don't I don't care if he's standing in right here. Um, so I say we just get the payment up front because this guy he's desperate for someone to take him because I can tell he's just afraid of these rumors of the dragon. He's not going to go on his own. He needs someone to take him. Yeah. He cannot do this job. Unless someone takes them, so he's going to have to pay us ahead of time. And I also think that at the very least, we could probably negotiate a little bit. Like you never take the first offer; that's bad business. Oh my god! <laughs> you, you, no, 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 but you're smooth. You're right for once. This guy's desperate, so why would we take his first offer? Let's see if we can. Get, let's see if we can jack up the price a little bit. Honestly, we wouldn't normally do this in front of <laughs> looking him up and looking him up and down. Archon is like a client. Yeah. But, my my uh, my my friends here do bring up a fair point. Um, it does feel like perhaps you could make it a little worth our while, more than the posted board that no one has responded to in days in this little pissant town that you suddenly also, find yourself trapped point. in. Also a good point. And the bartender seems to have, uh, well, he didn't necessarily sing your praises. Yeah, so you may not be sleeping so comfortably knowing there's all these people who either A, don't trust you, B, don't believe any of your ridiculous nonsense about how great you are, or C, want you out of their goddamn inn. And just 15 miles separates yeah. you from getting away from them. It's a seller's market right now, not a buyer's market. And we're the sellers. We're selling our services. You're the buyer. So what's it going to be? All right, so pause as the DM. So normally, if you were to do something like this in front of an NPC that is the quest giver, this NPC or the DM, depending on how they want to run things, would either have the NPC probably turn on you and attack you, but it would be four on one. So that may not be the wisest idea. But what they could do is decide not to take your services at all and oh. go, you know, you don't, you literally plan to murder me right here in front of my <laughs> salad. And no, to be fair, I, flo I floated the idea. We didn't say we were going to do that. But floating the idea means you said it, correct? I'm, as an idea, but the whole group has to agree. We didn't. It's not but like the, we like, took a vote in front of the guy and said, "Yeah, let's kill him." But hold on. But whether or not the group agrees, <laughs> they still the NPC still was still standing, still standing there. You two feet out away loud, from Gary. You. Out loud, out loud in front of the mark. I mean, in front of the client. <laughs> loud. Also, can I just ask a question? Did you say in front of my salad? I did. I did. Yeah. What the hell does that mean? You've what? never seen that? Yeah. You oh, Brian. Wait, what? Brian, is, Brian is or someone, please. Is this a D&D thing? No, oh my it's goodness not. Gracious. I, I think I, so, um, Typha's disappeared again. Where's she gone? Oh, she's standing. Oh, yeah. She's so, moved. I don't oh. know if Drift hit or not. Drift hit, sorry. When the Drift I, hits. Oh. You know, like, in front of my salad, oh. I'm out. <laughs> Goodbye. Simply, simply just. I'm, I'm buying <laughs> new Joy-Cons <laughs> for all of you and sending them to you. 
I need a new front of my salad right? refers to the incred incredulity of someone doing something astonishingly fr flagrant while you are just kind of minding your own business doing something like <laughs> like you're really going to do this right here right now in front of me while I'm just trying to have my salad. Hmm? That's great. Um, I just saw the YouTube video where like, uh, just look at yeah, look it up like later cuz cuz yeah, that's not that that is not content for this stream. <laughs> it's content, but right, I would so... like to keep my Twitch channel, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we, we floated the idea of killing this guy or kidnapping him, but that we, we didn't agree to do that. We, you know, we I, I, I run it up the flagpole to see if anyone saluted it, but you, uh, nobody nobody went for it. I shut so, it down pretty the, damn quick. So note to the DM. Um, yes. What is Don John Ron John John Ron? I don't know. Whatever. Don Juan. Don. <laughs> how they how they how they how they looking? Is there sweat or is there like? Uh, um, um, how are they reacting to the fact that we're just discussing this casually in front of them? <laughs> um, so the gate, so there's not a real good description of Don John Raskin. So just because I'm evil, imagine Dorian Pavis as this <gasps> character. Uh, Who? Right. Dor so have you Don't played Dragon yeah, Age Inquisition? You gotta, no. You need more universal references. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, God, what's the character Johnny Depp played in Pirates of the Caribbean? Jack Sparrow? A clean version go. of Jack Sparrow. A cleaned up version of Jack okay. Sparrow. Okay, all right, yeah. A bit of a bullshitter, a bit flamboyant. Correct. And so he's standing okay. there, like literally hand on hip, staring at you specifically, Marenghi, going... Yeah. You do realize that I could hear this idea, don't you? You, I yeah, and it doesn't you. matter whether you hear it or not. If I decide to kill you, I'm going to fucking kill you. Like, it doesn't matter if you know about it or not. So I don't really care. I'm having, you know, I'm not, it would, it would be inconvenient for me to, you know, move this whole conversation down the corridor and have it in private. I'm just, you know, these are, these are my boys right here. My, my, this is the Order of the Sunfish. Yeah, he'll uh, also, just so you know, if you decide to t not take this uh, offer, where you're offering here, he may also just get drunk and kill you in the night, so... Yeah, I'm, I, that's true. I mean, even if we agree not to kill you, I could just, you know, kill you in a, in a drunken... Because I, I do have these uh, psychotic nightmares, and uh, I do often act them out. I sleepwalk with a... I have a scimitar and a flail, and you could just be in the wrong place at the wrong time in the middle of the night. Out of character. This is just Gary's character saying, I'm not rooming with any of you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When I say, like, I'm, I'm saying in my... I'm not sharing it with anyone. That's really for your safety, not mine. All right, so, um, you know what? This is a moment that I'm going to use this as a teaching moment, Gary, that your, your actions oh, and your no. words and character have consequences. <laughs> oh, God. Have I, oh. Have, I, have, I, have I done wrong? Um, usually you saying... Really and... <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Gary... I'm sorry, come on. Are you serious? <laughs> You literally said I might just That's murder right. you, and I don't care if you agree. What do you think? Not is only about actively to murder you, passively murder you, maybe sleepwalking yeah. I mean, murder you. I mean, murder was the only option you put I mean, out. I am, as Marangi, I am still banking on the fact that this guy is desperate. He needs to get to this mine. He doesn't want to stay in this podunk town. There's a dragon. No one else has answered his job. We're the only game in town. So, but he loves the know. smell of his own farts, Gary. He probably thinks he can take you. Listen, the strongest person in a negotiation is always the one who's more willing to walk away. And I will walk away. But this guy, we, we, he needs us more than we need him, basically. You don't know that. that, that, that that's what I'm... You well, don't Tanya's going to tell me, I guess, <laughs> if, I, if I miscalculated. But that's oh, that's the card I'm playing. Because I think oh, we'll get more money out of this guy. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. So, she uh, saved the elbow. Uh, I, feel like yeah. gonna, I feel like Tanya's about Tanya. to punish me. Oh, yes. Can yes, I, I uh, <laughs> use perception to see if he's going to attack Gary? Uh, for the I mean, sake of this Marangi. moment, uh, no, you may not. Because, again, this is this is one of those yes, but moments, Gary, where, yes, you oh, can no. say these things, but there will be a consequence. So, Don John Raskin is no stranger to fisticuffs or to people trying to murder him. And don't forget, he <laughs> believes his own hype. So he just oh, gives no. you a smile. And he he basically 
gives you that roguish look like, all right, I, I see through you. I've met men like you before. And he just does like, he holds a hand up in that kind of hold please and shuts the door. You hear some rummaging and he comes out with a rather large long sword strapped to his back. And he approaches you, okay. Marengi, with a smile. You think you're tough, don't you? <laughs> so you say I mean, you have him in the I, I mean, I mean, I am pretty tough. Plus, I really don't care whether I live or die. So, you know, I have nothing to lose. Uh, and so if you want to fight, I mean, you, you seem like someone who is fairly in love with yourself. And I feel like you want to keep going on living. I personally, I, I, I'm all out of fucks, and I have been for a long time. I, I, I don't care if I die right here on the spot. It means nothing to me. Just like your life means nothing to me. So ask yourself, which of the two of us has the most to lose in this encounter? All right. and, and ask yourself if you really want to really do this. Plus, there's four of us. You know, the, the numbers don't add up for you, frankly. Well, see, here's... Archon quickly does a side <laughs> eye and starts whistling. Hmm... <laughs> Mm. So here, so Luke looks at the camera and rolls his eyes. <laughs> like, mm. So, um, Don, Don John Raskin, because I just like saying his whole name, actually. Um, he just gives you that smile. You know, the smile before someone does something really, really bad and they don't care if they get caught. Um, mm. He just points to you, Marengi, and then downstairs, you, me, in front of the inn, five minutes. You win, I'll pay you all up front and you won't hear another peep out of me. You lose, and I'm gonna beat an apology out of you. Fair terms. I mean, I like where this is going, but are we, I, I like where, we, where we're going, but like the stakes are pretty low. Are we not fighting to the death? Because those are the only stakes I understand. I mean, he's got a job to do, and he does think a lot of himself. So, sidebar, out of character, um, the other characters could try to intervene, or you can roleplay out what you are doing while this shenaniganry is happening right in front of you. Um, so, so, just a quick sorry, question. So, if, uh, if, he, if he goes, uh, out of character, if he goes to uh, attack Marangi, uh could I not throw a dagger at his throat? You could. So you could. So if they go out in front of the inn and decide to duel or fight and you decide to interfere, then you will all roll initiative. Or whoever decides to get <laughs> in between this fight. Yeah. How bad do you want to do this, Marengi? That's if you get to it's murder um, Marengi. <laughs> yeah. The other characters right now have a moment to, like, intervene do an action anything Correct. or we can just sit back get some popcorn i mean popcorn. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. why don't we all just take a deep breath <laughs> and save our energy for the 15 mile trek in the morning i think everyone's a little drunk brilliant idea <laughs> i um, i haven't had a drink look this, 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 look this is an opportunity for the for the for the, for the other members of the order of the sunfish to demonstrate their faith in you may not have much faith in me as a person and you shouldn't but you should have face, faith in me as an ass kicker. And if, I, I, all I need to do, I take, take me five minutes, take this guy out front, kick the shit out of him. And what is it, double the money? I mean, we're getting paid up front, right? So job Jeez. done. Like, I mean, seriously, what do you think the chances are that this guy's gonna beat me? Come on. This, 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 it's, it's, time for you, it's time for the Order of the Sunfish to demonstrate that they know Marengi can kick this guy's ass. I'm or, sure he you, can kick his ass, but I want 25 gold and I want it early in the morning. So why don't yeah. we just do this another time? And honestly, I'm just I'm just insulted that you didn't actually try to extort more money out of him should you win. So I would really like to get this over with as soon as possible. Um, could I, I mean, I, I, I wanted to fight to the death, in which case we could have taken every penny that he had. Have we even seen how many uh, pennies he has? I mean, we know he's got at least 100. Hmm. Tanya? Yes? I have Cook's utensils, right? Yes. Um, now, does that contain a frying pan? For the sake of argument, let's say yes. Oh, okay. So, I want to go do this uh, quest in the morning. And okay. And I think we should uh, uh, 
I'll, I'll get to sleep and, and Marangi's not going to give up on this whole uh, shtick about how tough he is. So it's what would shtick. happen if, let's say, I took that <laughs> frying pan out and I smacked Marangi up the back of the head to knock him unconscious <laughs> so that we can all go to sleep? We'll put but him in that's, his bed. That's, that's not something that he can just do, right? We would have to roll on that. Yeah. I, so, okay. all right. So hold on. Hold on. So this is where a DM explanation <laughs> comes in. Normally, Tanya, I'm really I, I really apologize if this turned more into kindergarten cop than you wanted it to. <laughs> this train fell off the rails the minute you gave that dark as fuck backstory. Just so we're clear. Um, <laughs> Did you have to go so hard, Gary? Did you have to go so hard? So I'm getting into it. By so, the way, this is the best pilot episode of television I've seen all like all year. I would watch this show. So Order of the Sunfish, Netflix, <laughs> oh let's make God. it happen. I mean, you have more pull on that than I do. So, um, I'm, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be exercising it. So here is a yes but situation, and this is me explaining as a DM. Yes, you could do that, but you must be prepared for the repercussion in character once you do this so you would have to roll and currently moringa's attention is all on don john and they are in a hallway don john is basically staring down moringa <laughs> and there is an there you could easily get around and because um moringa is a half elf he's not very tall uh -huh. so so if you rolled well enough, and I'm going to roll a d20 on my end to see what you need to beat, you could do okay. that. So there's there's two repercussions. One, injuring Merengue and knocking him out because a, a skillet back then would have probably been made out of stainless steel or cast iron. So let's not cave his skull in. And two, yeah. the in-character repercussion of when he comes around and realizes what <laughs> happens. Now the out of right, character got drunk and bumped his head. So here's the out of character repercussion, and this is something we can talk about in depth on another stream or in a debrief after. Um, there's also something called emotional bleed, where mm -hmm. you know we're having fun, no one is getting angry for real, but sometimes emotions can bleed into a scene or out of a scene after you're done. So like, this is all fun and games, we're hamming it up, etc. But what if perhaps, let's say Gary really got angry at this, at us kind of thwarting his attempt to be over the top or whatever, <laughs> and it comes out later and either your character is really mean, really, really angry, like you're unduly cruel or something to another character or even another player where it's mm -hmm. like fuck this game this isn't fun i don't get to do what i do and that's called emotional bleed and it affects okay. you and it affects the emotional cohesion because you're being vulnerable when you sit at a table whether it's virtual or it's real or on stream and especially when other people can see what you're doing you know our avatars are speaking for us but in a case like you know the show that i'm on people can see us see our emotions and mm -hmm. that's why it's always important if you can't debrief immediately to debrief after the fact or right. you know, like chat like be it in a discord or a zoom call or what have you so like rivals when we were before covid we would go out every week after the show and kind of talk through everything that happened and debrief make sure everyone was doing okay especially if we had a really hard emotional scene that happened um and now with covid and everything what we're doing is kind of hanging out in zoom after to kind of check in with each other so you don't want that emotional bleed to follow you post session and if anyone ever does anything or like you know we're being silly we're having fun and i don't think anyone is getting actually angry but in a debrief session once the the quote unquote camera's off and we're not live it's like were you okay with that maybe i know i went over the top or this is something i did are you okay with my character behaving in this way? And if that bothered you as a player, please tell me so we can address right. it and know going forward, okay, there's a limit to which, let's say, Merengue can can have this anger problem, this drinking problem, whatever, or mm -hmm. if, you know, Archon is aloof to the point where I feel like 
maybe Brian's not engaged or the character is like, you know, not into it. So that's just something to be aware of because again, we're all the table. We're all supposed to have fun and it's supposed to be collaborative. And again, I'm not saying anyone's doing this, but it was just a good moment to kind of jump in and explain emotional bleed. That, no, that's, that's good. That's like really insightful to yeah, learn that I, stuff. And it's, uh, I, I, I was thinking like, since we're at this point, what if we took a cliffhanger here and we come back, if we're going to come back and finish up uh, another time at this point? I mean, we could, that could so be then a good cliffhanger. Afterwards, we can talk more about that. That sounds, Wait, that so sounds I don't, I don't, I don't know if, I don't know if you threatening to hit me over the head with a frying pan is <laughs> much of a cliffhanger. I mean, it could be because no. You... The cliffhanger is Gary's gonna get killed probably if we don't figure out a good solution. And, and you know, time in a cliffhanger, time like you know, there are entire seconds where Smoog maybe changes their mind about the plan. Who knows? For, for, mm-hmm. I, but I, I also do want to address what Tani just said because I think it's very, very insightful and interesting. And it is almost like, um, as a DM you have to be a bit of a therapist as well and like take everyone's you know kind of feelings and the emotional dynamic of the group into account and um you know i'm having a lot of fun playing this character but if my attempts to kind of like really kind of make him like over the top misanthropic is annoying anyone then yeah you should absolutely tell me and i'll dial it back yeah and that's and that's what a what a debrief is is good for because you know in a case where like let's say we were at someone's house and we could see each other like we like we can't see each other right now for the folks watching at home we're doing this all in animal crossing we don't have like a zoom call so we can see each other while we play and that would be something where if we kept doing this we could have a zoom call going so we can see each other while we are doing this in animal crossing because then you can at least get those cues from our facial expressions right now all we can do is go by what we're hearing and what we're seeing and the things that we are saying so um that's why a D and D or any system, because there's so many systems that you could do. Um, it's good where you can at least see people versus um, just having text, because some people do play over text. They play in Discord, etc. And so, you know, that would be a good thing to do. And we can actually debrief a little bit and agree to leave this at a cliffhanger, because I know for Brian it's eight, it's eight o'clock. For me, it's seven, and I know for you all it's five. And we're getting into dinner slash family time. And I do want to be respectful. I, we've already spent about four hours or so in this, so we can pick a date to come back at the cliffhanger, and hopefully Gary's character will not get murdered, and we can actually venture into uh, <laughs> Mountain Toe Mine and see what happens with Don John Raskin. And we can also do a bit more on the back end with D&D Beyond to make sure that you all have good equipment, that you're the appropriate level, yeah. etc. But I do want to debrief a little bit. We can leave the basement, wander around outside get a stretch because we've been sitting virtually and in real life um i will keep some notes too because i know that shannon has to jet oh, oh okay. do you have to go jet? yeah do sorry i've been tr- i've been trying to dm you guys for a while oh no oh, i'm so see. sorry i'm sorry i have somewhere to physically be it's okay all good i'm having fun Yay. but i just didn't want to leave you guys in the lurch <laughs> no worries i hope you no had fun i hope you all had a good time this is so much Shannon. fun. Sorry, we didn't. We kept you longer than you were, were able to stay. No, all good. I mean, this is now my my barrier, so that's the only. I, I was good to do another hour. <laughs> do you want to play? Do you want to play again? Do you want to do another session? Heck yeah! I want to get this quest moving. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I say I am personally enjoy just how dysfunctional this group is out of the gate. But that's that's great though, because I think by the end we'll have you know it's like a buddy movie. You hate each other at the beginning, but by the end you know you become like best best pals. Well, it's it's definitely sure. a, a good character arc start. Uh, yeah, we don't sure. know yet, B, because this is our first time doing this. We wanted to make sure everybody had fun. Uh, Gary and I can definitely co stream. Oh, and the sun is setting on my island. It's very pretty. So come outside, and we can wave Shannon off, and then we can chat a bit and sit on these yeah. benches. Um, play some music. And feel free to look around the island. Oh. That that time just flew by for me. That was like yeah, it really did. really fun. I would like look. I was like, geez, that was four hours. It was so fun. Oh, oh my wow. gosh, look at all your blue flowers. They're so beautiful. Thank you. Um, I lucked out, and a community member offered me a blue rose, and then I had a lot of rain on my island. And <gasps> amazing. Uh, yeah, you are welcome to always come back and visit. 
You have shooting stars. I do. Thanks, friends. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Bye. I saw, I saw one just go up behind me. Oh, we can go. Bye, get Shannon. Stars. See you next time. Oh. Bye, guys. Bye. Take care. This is a lot of fun. Hi, I love this. Thank you so much. I can't wait to do next time. You're so so welcome. All right, let's go to the let's go to up by the the hidden beach and wish on stars while we chat because I didn't know I had stars today. Yeah, I, I definitely just saw one go by. Yeah, um, Isabel never tells me when I have stars. It's also. Isabel will tell you, but also like the usual Animal Crossing, when you talk to everyone every day, usually one of your residents, if not more of them, will know like, oh, we're expecting this tonight. It's so bright. Oh, well. But yeah, oh, while, while we... Your secret beach. Good. It's down here. <laughs> I wouldn't know. Red never shows up, so... Um, I've yet to see any stars on my own beach, except for like one time. So yeah, while we're waiting on stars, because I think Shannon got one before she left. Um, or we can go down. Bye, Shannon. Uh, Thank you, you so much. Um, so yeah, let me. what did everyone think? What was your first experience like? I hope I was a, a good and fun and fair DM for you all today. I gotta yeah. say, I... I, uh, I was looking forward to this and I thought I would enjoy it. I actually wound up enjoying it much more than I thought I would. I thought that was great. And again, I do it, but like, I really got into my character and I'm kind of like throwing my weight around a little bit. And I, and I do, I think that emotional check-in thing that you, that you pointed out, Tanya, was, um, you know, worth, worth remembering. And, you know, you, wanna, you want everyone else to have fun and I don't want to overdo it. Yeah, but that's why you do a debrief. That's why you check in. And that's why also... It's really important to listen when, like, if so, so, like, we have a, so for Rivals, because we're virtual, because COVID, um, we have a Slack that is for us for chatting. We do have a Discord that is uh, more public, but that's more, like, for viewers that, oh, I went down instead of up. And, um. I can't go. Is there a reason I can't go forward on your hidden, do you have something? Nope. I can't, I can't move forward. Um, is something in the way? I also can't turn the camera. I, because of the cliff, I can't see. Oh, I can see um, you. You should be able to walk forward. You're, you're on a ledge. You're on the Am I still ledge. on a ledge? Oh yeah, you're still on a ledge. Oh, that's the thing is, I can't, I can't see that there's a ledge here. So turn around and yeah. Press A with the ladder. I, I am. Huh. Move over to your left more. Yeah, there you go. Weird. What the hell is going on? Do you have your ladder up? Come on. There you go. There it is. There you go. The Yay. IT guy. What kind of inaccessible <laughs> mess is this? Look. <laughs> um, so I I'm am just calling keep OSHA. A. You can call Osha all you want. So I'm going to press A until we start seeing some stars. And I see uh, Adam is like front and center with his golden poop hat. Um, it could have been a one-off. I really did just see one. Oh, that's fair. I saw two. I, I, I oh, pushed okay. one with you. They're, they're definitely happening, but it doesn't start until about 7 o'clock. So it's well, it's go, 7 it's for me and 8 for you. But yeah, so We're things like island, that. So, yeah. so things like that um are when you just need to kind of check in and you know very well if we know that that's how you plan to play this character we can adjust for it and then you know the the whole idea is for people to be adults enough to go hey i know you're really leaning into this but it's uncomfortable for me and again this is just giving right. examples i can't speak for anyone else and you know and as the dm if i notice so like if we had a zoom call going and I can see, ooh, someone's cringing when you do this. Then I can kind of right. like whisper you or something, go, hey, maybe scale it back. Or I could even throw down the X card if it was too much for me, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I think for me, also because we can't see each other, like with me, it's a work thing where I'm like, we have to kind of remember conference call rules where you have to make sure you're giving 
like you're giving everybody an equal moment to talk and you're making sure to not step on anyone because I feel like that was happening where, where like Gary you were you were actually still working through like verbally what your character would do and and didn't really give like Tanya's Tanya as the DM voicing a character to answer or respond and yeah I was like that, that's the kind of give and take that like it's easier to see when you can see each other but but either way it's like just kind of remember like not to say you have to like shorten and clip off everything you're doing, but to make sure that everybody kind of has an has a moment to do an action before your character completely barrels barrels through everything and threatens no, to kill you're, the mark. Listen, you're, you're totally right, and half of that is I I, I take a lot of the responsibility for that because that's just I I I do that a lot. I'm very alpha and I talk over people, and it's like I really just like that part of my personality, and I'm working on it. As you can see, I've still got some ways to go. Some of it is also due to the fact that over Discord and on Zoom and stuff, it's really, really hard to kind of anticipate like mm -hmm. the ebb and flow of a conversation. And you, you end up like saying, oh, sorry, go ahead, like all the time on these calls because it's hard to, you know, it's it's, it's harder than in, in person. But no, listen, you're totally right. And I, I got to get better at that. Um, yeah, and, and, part and, so, of, and, like and Tanya, I, I also apologize to you if that's if that was if you felt that way as well. Um, it was it was a little bit so the the hard part with D and D too, especially when you're new, is like it's exciting and you want to jump in and you want to, you know, you want to like kind of do things. And even as a DM, you have to be careful not to over narrate for people and go. You walk into this tavern and you see this the the barkeep and kind of you know you talk to him and then knowing when to step back and let people play out their characters and it's learning everyone has to learn you know so yeah granted not everyone gets to learn to play D, &D you know virtually using animal crossing with a few hundred people watching <laughs> but um you know everyone has to start somewhere and you know you as a storyteller as someone who is a professional writer i think as as we play more and as you get a chance to play more there'll be more and more chances to kind of see how the narrative can weave together and ways in which you can collaborate or see, oh, I see what Brian's trying to do here. My character has X skill, so once he's done with whatever he's doing, I can go, well, Merengue notices um, this character's trying to, like, steal your drink or steal your purse or pickpocket you. And because I know what that looks like, because I've done it, I'm going to try to intervene and stop this person. And, you know, right. it could be a good bonding way to kind of smooth over that initial rough entry into meeting each other. Right. And even, you know, and even so, we can develop, like, because we're doing this without face cams, and maybe we will do this more and we'll have face cams. Like, now that we have done it, we can kind of look back and say, what would have been easier is if, like, we had... To making sure everyone who's in the scene gets an action which again it, it's hard because it does drag down like okay what are you doing okay what are you doing okay what are you doing right but, right because it may maybe we're all saying you know what we're just going to sit back and see how this plays out <laughs> no yeah. you know what's really interesting to me is sorry tanya go ahead please i don't know i was i was just going to say that um the next time we do this is that we <laughs> could have um a zoom call up so we can at least see each other mm-hmm and then we can record yeah. that and, you know, put the audio out as, as a as a podcast version or strip the audio from this. Because I do want to clean up the video a little bit and then put it out as, like, a nice YouTube vid. Um, but that could help because, again, with, like, Rivals, we're doing it on Zoom and people are watching us, but we are focused on each other. So, you know, that is the part where it'll help where when we do this again we pick up we have a zoom call or some kind of visual cues because you've got your camera on so i can see you but i didn't have my yeah. camera on and brian and adam and shannon didn't have cameras so you know that's that's the hard part right what's really interesting to me about all this is like you, you go into this thinking it's a learning experience learning experience but i was thinking about it in terms of well, I need to learn the rules and the combat systems and how the D, like what the D20 does and all that kind of stuff, thinking about like kind of the mechanics of the game. But there's clearly a whole other aspect of the game, which is the social dynamic and learning how to kind of, you know, work, you know, everyone's personalities are a good fit within the group. And, you know, this is our first time out. And I suspect that as groups that are kind of the same people every time, 
learn, you know, the, the you know whatever the idiosyncrasies or whatever of each pe- each person is. That over time, that gets easier and better because this is our first time doing it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And Brian, you used to play not just D and D, but you played vampire, correct? Yeah. And that's a whole different thing because I've only played vampire once with B Day Walters, so how? That is an entirely different system. So for you, especially because it was live action role play and not something like this, how is that different? Because I'm sure the, the dynamics and learning to work with each other is so much different in a LARP situation. Um, it, it is. And again, that was that was a lot harder on the storytellers, I think, because we were we were doing an active like real person live action role play. So they essentially there were a lot more um, like notes on paper being passed forth. There were a lot of out of character conversations to make sure that everybody who had a major plot point or a major story was getting it resolved. But yeah, I mean, es- essentially, especially for me, um, any kind of any kind of like dreamed game, just kind of remembering. <laughs> I'm sorry, Svenolf and your chat is like, yeah, the vampire masquerade people, they, they get into it. Um, but just to make sure that um, it's fun for it's it's fun for everyone who's at the table and it's fun for folks who are watching because yeah we could we there are moments where we're probably going to get really deep into like okay hold on i gotta look up this in the appendix i gotta see how many dice rolls i don't know how this you know like there are going to be those moments where we're going to encounter something and none of us know how to handle it but otherwise Mm -hmm. maybe that thing can be handled through role play maybe it can be handled by the gm just saying you know what just let's let's ignore that let's use this stat let's try moving on Right. Um, yeah, there, there are a lot of different ways to approach this, but I, all of that happens after people have played together and get to know yeah. each other. And for all of us, just getting back into the system is a whole big thing. Yeah, I mean, for me, the kind of the improvisational storytelling and the banter between the party members and stuff is, I enjoy more that than, I enjoy that more than like the, the you know, rolling a, rolling a D20. You know, like it's all fun, but like that's the part that to me is more kind of creative and fun. And interesting than you know the kind of the you know statistical table part of the game but um again i, I apologize if i got carried away first time out with my uh, very uh, over the top character i will like i said every 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 time out here is a learning experience and, and brian and tanya who are clearly the two most experienced D players here i am uh, i'm taking it all on board and applying it to the next session yeah and you know it's all learning and you know even being a dm that doesn't come overnight either. I, um, you know, I played for many, many years before I tried to DM and I still get incredibly nervous. Um, part of it is performance anxiety. Part of it is simply, I am worried that I will not bring a good experience to the players. But there's also the give and take. Sometimes people want to be a DM for bad reasons. And I feel a lot of people don't talk about it. Bye, Adam, or whoever's leaving. That's me leaving. Okay. Taking myself back to my island. No worries, because I'm still here though. Okay. No, I I just I I was looking at the chat. I was looking at at my main screen, not at the game, so I wasn't sure who was leaving. I just heard the noise. Um. You know, some people do want to be DMs for bad reasons, and I feel like people don't talk about that very often. Some people just want a power trip. They want to railroad players and they have a very finite idea of what it is they'd like to do versus what it is that makes for a fun time, that makes for a good experience for people. Because uh, I'm friends with N.K. Jemison, and she's talked about this, where she got put off of playing because of how someone basically told her she couldn't be a paladin because paladins don't look like she does. And at the time... What? Yeah, that's a big reason why she's not really into role playing, because she, you know, Nora is a Nora and I are the same age. She's a black woman, and a friend, well, another kid, teenager, I think, told her, "You can't be a paladin," and pointed at like the blonde, blue-eyed paladin in the in the current edition at that time. And it's like, well, that's a plain message that I don't belong in this, and so many but people isn't- have. Yeah. That's a lot of reasons a lot of us have not. Isn't the whole point of role playing that you get to be someone that you're not? Yeah. I it's like I, I'm not I'm not yeah. a barbarian either, but I can play one in World of Warcraft. Yeah. 
Um, but the kind of experience a lot of people get is, is a very gatekeeping experience by those who, by those who think that they're, they know the only way that, that that particular game can be played. And a lot of them have drawn their ideas from how that game can be played by, you know, by the, um, by the source books, by the pictures, by the descriptions, which are kind of, I mean, like not even, not even to be kind about it. They're, they're steeped in a lot of whiteness. So there were there was a whole lot of, oh, you want to play this? Um, well, I guess you have to be this character because their brain would just scramble for like any character they had seen with like a darker skin color in the book. And I'm like, no, you know, that's that's why a lot of people have found it hard to get into this hobby, and that's why it's been so great that people are being welcomed into it now to be able to see other people at the table who look like them, and and having a good time. Yeah, I quite agree. Yeah, you know, and that's a big part of why um, Rivals of Waterdeep was put together. And unfortunately, a lot of people just look at us as a diverse show. They don't look at us as a group of storytellers that do a damn good job. They go, oh, but it's such a diverse show. And our, the whole point of, D- of Rivals of Waterdeep was to show that anyone can learn to play. Some people on our show had never played before we sat on stage at D&D Live in 2018. And now, uh, Shreve Jackson, I don't know if he's still in the chat, he'd never played before our show. He's now DM'd three seasons of the show. He's DMing on his own and using D&D in his teaching, like he's adjunct teaching and using math and using puzzles to torture us during our sessions. But Ugh, math. I mean, I was never good at puzzles. I've never been great at them. But you know, that just shows that Anyone can learn to play, and you don't need to memorize every single rule. You don't need to know all the mechanics. The book is there for a reason. It's a guide, but it is not a tablet written in stone that the great D&D gods have brought down off a mountain. So, right. but people act that way, and, and they still act like, oh, well, what do you mean you haven't been playing since Red Box First Edition? You didn't know... You never met Gary Gygax. How dare you say that you know how to play D and D? It's like I have weird, dice. Weird. Mm. Yeah, weird fact. I actually have met him. Right. <laughs> I have and it. Like, and like, and yeah, it's it, it. It's really. I think every a lot of different cultural hobbies have that moment of like, well, this is the this is the only way it can be played, and if you don't know all the rules going all the way back, like. It's it's just ridiculous. For what should be a lot of fun. Um, well, my first experience out of the gate, even though, um, you know, I I found myself kind of, um, you know, butting up against the guardrails a few times there as I'm kind of like figuring out, you know, how this all works. Um, I uh, I got I got the sense even just you know even though we're not out of this tavern yet, uh, I got the sense that I would really enjoy that this is something I could potentially really get into. So I hope we get to play more. And I, I think it's going to serve us well if we do if we do play again, is that, you know, not knowing anyone's backstory until you sit down at the table and then running an adventure probably isn't optimal. But now that we have kind of ideas of what our characters' stories are, it gives us time to talk offline before the next session and maybe come up with like, okay, we know this is what you always do when we when we face a client or you know how these like you now know how these characters worked in the past and how they did manage to band together like figuring that out would probably help us actually play off of each other when we play next time right yeah i mean it's all all, it's all learning and i think that is a good place to end because it's about i'm getting to feel like dinner time and i know it's 8 30 for you brian um, and it feels like my I mean, yeah. internet is, my audio is trying to send me a very clear message <laughs> of, uh, hey, you should stop now. And it looks like Kate, our friend uh, Kate St- Stark is on right now. So I think we uh, should give Kate a, a double raid. What do you think? Why don't we raid Kate? Why not? I'm always happy to do that. So Tanya, would you be willing to ha- have us all back again? Do we get, do we, should we do this again? Absolutely. We just got to figure out a time that works out. Um, And, you know, be respectful of kind of everyone's time. So if a Saturday is better or kind of have a finite three hours 
um, because I'm thinking of I'm Central, Brian's East Coast, and you know, figuring out kind of what works for everybody. I would absolutely love to do this and make it a thing we do if people are yeah. willing to do so, and we could, um, on occasion, I'm... maybe even have a guest player if it works out. And then every session, Adam can talk Gary into buying us all dinner. Yes. And right. um, that way I can just, I can just be like, oh, hold on, my pizza's here. I can just run out and grab that. I, 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 I'm very, like, let's you gotta roll better what... though, Adam. You can't just like, you can't pull a net. No, no, no failing on the getting Gary to buy <laughs> oh, us that, all dinner. That was, that was my favorite moment of the day, that <laughs> abject failure of rolling a one. Um, and let's not forget where we were. As I, let, let's not forget where we left off. This move was planning to sucker punch me in the back of the head with a frying pan. Yeah. I feel like we need to pick up right where we left off. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he yeah. was. So, yeah, when, when next yeah, Dungeon gosh. Crossing returns, <laughs> will we'll Smoop get to bean Merengue with a frying pan? Who knows? We'll find out next time. Right. Tune in next week. I'm going to see if I can get us a logo whipped up as well, because I think that would oh be my cool. Goodness. That'd be great. That'd be great. Why don't we talk to Adam? Why don't we talk to Panda, see if he'll do something for us? Or I, I, I can do that. Or I, or I can talk to uh, Chandaya, who did our Animal Talking logo. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, all, right. all right. I'm um, going to start this And also, Tani, I know you yes. said you were going to... Yes? Sorry, one last question. I know you said you were going to put this on YouTube. Are you okay if I post my version as well? Of course. Okay. Absolutely. But I don't want to commit an internet faux pas. No. Uh, feel free, because we each can have our, our own versions, and then we can... Uh, Maybe do a chat about it um, on someone's island or, oh my God, actually show our faces. Yeah, I love it. I, I, I'm, I'm in. I, I, like, my, my first experience was enough to convince me that I would definitely want to do this again. So I hope, I hope we can make the, the, the schedules line up and Thank do it Thank you so much for including us. Yeah, You're this welcome. is great. And, you know, shout out to Kate and Brandon Stennis, who are the reason I wound up on Animal Talking and we got a chance to chat and come up with this idea. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Look what came out of it. I love it. My favorite thing about animal talking is when guests kind of make, like, hit it off and make friends and other things come out of it. It's brilliant. That's my favorite, favorite part. And this yeah. is an example of that. Yeah. And it sounds like stars are happening. So I'm going to chase stars. We're oh. going to raid Kate, who's uh, okay. playing Animal Crossing. I'm, I'm raiding. I'm starting the raid right now. Same. Um, we'll hit, hit, her with, hit her with the double whammy. Dungeon Crossing raid. Here we go. Here we go. I'm sending my people over. I'm my trying peeps. to type great. I'm trying to press A for the stars. Ah. <laughs> All right. I have a... Uh... I'm trying to join. Whoa. Ah, no. Stars. All right. I'm starting <gasps> my raid. I will see you all over there. Thank you, Gary. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Shannon and Adam. And let's go Thanks, chase Anya. stars. See you later. Yeah, thank you. All righty. Take care, everyone. Oh, and of course,